Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Richard Lewis Show. I'm Richard Lewis. Joining me, as he always does, is my uh, tubby manservant, Sam. I must have out for a while, eh? No, I, I thought we'd, um, we, we, we'd go back in time and dredge up some of the classics. My hetero life mate, Sam Davis. Uh, uh, look, I'll be honest. I'll say this right at the top of the show. Um, I... I um, uh, like I'm, I'm kind of a bit discombobulated uh, for obvious reasons. I know a lot of you guys. Like I don't want to harp on about it. Um, y- you know, I know a lot of you guys. I uh, heard about Total Biscuit passing away, and obviously me and Joe were friends. And um, I have I don't even know how many days it's been since he died. I've been fucked up. I've been uh, shit face drunk uh, the entire time, pretty much. Um, and uh, I'm kind. I've been like dreading having to come on air because like i'm trying to like you know i want to be able to hold it together i don't want to be a fucking uh drama queen and like burst into tears or anything stupid because you know look um it it puts it in perspective like all you need to know uh, and uh, i'm not going to talk about john this show the show isn't about john um but you know he worked up um right until the the end uh just an incredible spirit within him and, 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 a, and a lust for life and a lust to do his work. And I just thought you just got to fucking pull your finger out and stop being a fucking pussy and just do what he would do, which is, you know, even while he was suffering with stage four fucking cancer and had a chemotherapy pump plugged into him, he was still putting shows out and all you're doing is sitting around the house in your underwear, drinking whiskey and feeling sorry for yourself. So I'm not going to do that anymore. And I got up and I had a shower and I shaved my head and, um, we're going to do a fucking show, but, but I'll say this, I, I, I feel garbage and, um, I, really apprehensive and kind of, I don't know, like just not my usual self. So, uh, if, if I do have to cut the show off early, I hope people un- understand. Um, and that's not, a, not to be dramatic or weird or anything, you know, it's just, I don't know. It's kind of surreal. The whole thing. I haven't made sense of it yet. I, I can't really. Um, I will. I will say this as well. Um, there was a lot of stuff that I, I, I don't want to focus on until John's been laid to rest. Um, a lot of really unpalatable things said about him, unpleasant things said about him. Today we're going to do a show that's going to be about journalism, and I'll just say this: um, when I'm feeling at full strength, and and once people have paid their respect. All of these fucking journalists, all of these hacks that that told demonstrable lies about my friend, we're going to start looking at them and we're going to fucking see just how saintly and virtuous their lives are. So I hope they're ready for that. I, I make quite a bit of money now. Not Elon Musk levels. Uh, Elon Musk levels of money. But, um, but, but rest assured, I will be spending a large chunk of my change to start going through the histories of these people and and see if there's anything worth putting into the public interest because these people are ghouls. They are disgusting. They couldn't wait an hour and they went on to a public platform where his widow is obviously active because of how John lived his life and you you pissed on his memory and you pissed on his memory with lies, things that are not true. So I guess if we're all about the public interest and what's good for the goose is good for the gander, let's have a long, hard look at you then, you fuckers. Let's have a long, hard look at you. I'm going to be making a lot of time for you because what you did is unforgivable. Anyway, there's comedy. There's comedy in this show, Sam. And we're going we're gonna to do a show and um, we're not going to dwell on that stuff. Uh... I mean, I say it's comedy. <laughs> I, I just look at my fucking list here. First story is actually just horrific. Um, okay, so, like, dogs, Sam. Yeah. I remember, I, I think I, yeah, they're, they're an animal. <laughs> they exist, they're real. Before. Man's best friend, I'm told. Man's best friend. Uh, and what's, um, what's interesting in it is, like, you know, we've heard about how, like, there's all these, like, unsafe dogs. You, you know, like, there's dangerous yeah, dogs. Yeah, like, they say pit bulls and stuff like that. Yeah. Well, you know, I, I've always subscribed to that. Like, I'll be honest. I, I did have this thing where it was like, you know, I, I've said it myself. 
um, you know, you don't see like golden retrievers like mauling people to death, and maybe some dogs just are meaner than others, right? Um, and then somebody told me, Richard, you can't say that. That that's a racist dog whistle. Sorry. Yeah, I'll let you do the math on why that might be. And I was like, oh fuck, yeah. Well, in that case, yeah, all dogs have the capacity to be horrible. Then I thought, because I don't want to get called racist. Um, <laughs> it's never happened to me before. So there's a story, Sam. There's a story that it, it it's just gonna it, it shows that actually all dogs can't have the capacity to be fucking unreasonable, fucking hell, right? Right, well, you know those little sausage dogs, wiener dogs? Yeah. Now, I'll tell a story. This is... Right. My, my friend um, had, a, had a little sausage dog, a little dash or whatever the fuck, uh, and it was called Hoagie. And Hoagie was a mean little bastard. Miserable <laughs> prick of a dog. Like, I'm not even kidding. I have a scar on my fucking hand right there, uh, if you can see it, where Hoagie bit me for no fucking reason. <laughs> <laughs> and you can't even, it's not like uh, if a Rottweiler bites you or something, you can have a wrestle and a tussle with it, give it a few digs, it's going to be all right, and it's going to stop. <laughs> give it a few digs. It's a Rottweiler, it's yeah. fucking big as my shoulders. Oh, like, if you I'm know getting what I mean? bitten by a Rottweiler or a pit bull, mate, I'm doing some unspeakable things to that dog, 100%. As soon yeah. as you bite me, bud, game on, fucking, we're in the animal kingdom yeah. now. I'm, I, I'm just saying, if it, if it, a dog can kill you. Yeah. So obviously, if, and especially a big dog. So I'm not going to just stand there and take it in the yeah, interest of being a good humanitarian. Like. Obviously, no, 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 there's no. limits. No. That's what I mean. When Hoagie fucking bit me, I couldn't do anything about it, could I? It's a fucking dash hunt. What am I going to do? <laughs> you little, ah, you fuck. Just unreasonable. I had to go get a tetanus shot. Miserable fucking time. Four hours in A&E because my friend's fucking sausage dog has bit me. <laughs> miserable. Fuck that dog. He's dead now. Good glad he's dead i mean it, it this was like 20 years ago or something so it's not like he's he still alive yeah still biting man. just pure evil malevolence <laughs> keeping him alive like he just wants to bite me one more just time more, well anyway i couldn't believe this fucking story this is in the new york post a pack of wiener dogs mauled a woman to death in oklahoma <sighs> how many were there Right? No, but, well, this is the thing. So, um, I heard. Se se seven, I think. Seven wiener dogs. It just doesn't seem viable that they could kill you. That's what I mean. But, I reckon I can kill seven wiener dogs, but. <laughs> and or not, they're gone. No, obviously, I'm not going to do it for fun. I mean, like, if we're, if we're scrapping. Why? I'm just saying, mate, if we fight, fucking bet money on me, like, I'm going to win. 100%. Mate, why, why, why are all our shows about you beating animals? <laughs> like, when, when did that be? I, just, I don't know, mate. I don't know. There must be some catch, mate. These must be some mad wiener dogs. Seven doesn't sound like that much, but they must have some like special. Well, they were something. pretty fucking bad about something. Um, but anyway, they, they mauled this woman to death. Uh, Tracy Garcia, her name was, and um, uh, it, it, that all the dogs. There were seven of them, and they all weighed under forty pounds. Oh, what? And they had legs shorter than an adult's hands. Um. And they just went nuts. They were all about like one year old. The, the oldest was only three. And they they just went violent. They just went fuck <laughs> fuck wiener dogs, dude. And they that just is fucking like two hundred and eighty pounds a wiener dog though, but <laughs> come on, bro, you fucking they can't get on you all at yeah, once, but mate. That's a heavyweight the wiener dog, mate. <laughs> That's a fucking butter bean worth of wiener dogs. You have a swing, you, you put one, yeah. you know. You... I don't know, mate. It depends. Like, how trained are these wiener dogs? I feel like if you start, all right, isn't the strap stand? No, they can't break your throat. You might get your shins not yeah, death. But I, just I, big yeah, boots. I don't even know. Like, I just, I can't even picture the situation. She was only 52. There's no way wiener dogs are trained to go for the throat. If she was like 92. Yeah, and like, frail, yeah. Over, uh, I'd understand it. But it's just mad. Just a mad story. But yeah. Um, now, they, they've done DNA testing <laughs> on, on the wiener dogs to try and prove that it was they had pit bull mixed. It don't matter, though. They're fucking... <laughs> don't matter how much pit bull they got in them if, like, the end result is they're I a fucking... I can't mistake. believe someone's died, though, and the journalist has just put in that part, like, wreck. I'm like, the dogs evolve. We're all under 40 pounds and legs shorter than a hand. I can't believe you died. Like, come on. Uh, 
Not me tight. Yeah. It's bad, isn't it? Like, fucking hell. Just what a mad fucking story. Now, while we're talking about wiener dogs, um, can we get banned off Twitch for showing something that looks like a penis? <laughs> Surely not. I know it's a mad question, but I don't even know what, I don't even know what the rules are. Anymore. I think as long as it's not sexual, like, you know what I mean? Well, no, displayed in a sexual nature, you know what I mean? Well, no, it's not, but I'll be honest, when I first fucking yeah, saw I it, I thought, fucking, what's happened here? Someone's just sent me a knob. But they hadn't. It was a dog. So, um... This is the story. Um, right, we've talked about the, the Facebook algorithms. I mean, it, it seems like quite a quaint story now, by contrast like, with everything that's happened with Facebook. But um, they, they, they basically, Facebook started doing these like re- sort of advanced algorithms where they would scan pictures to see if they were appropriate for the platform using recognition, you know, detection. I yeah, know, but big that happened tech. to me before once, right, in a group chat, because, right, there was this you meme, put, there, no, there was a meme that someone dog. posted on Twitter, this guy got his balls, and he put them on an ice cream cone, right, and it looked just like ice cream, man, <laughs> it was fucking hilarious, I was like, well, I was about to send that to the boys, and I went to send it, like, this has been automatic, like, what the fuck, how does fate, how is it a robot who knows what a ball sack looks like, what's happened hey, there? Hell yeah, they fucking, they're good, these, these... Fucking sex detection robots. They're yeah, good, they, mate. Yeah, fucking hell. But this was just. I eat more humans thought that was an ice cream cone, mate. The robots figured it out. <laughs> yeah, mate, you, you were having a lick before you realized. <laughs> like, I was seeing the it. hair follicles. Uh, so basically, uh, a guy called uh, a, a Dominic. Uh, oh, I can't pronounce his surname. I, I, Everyone in, in the chat about, saying they've got a uh, the picture, mate. They love it. Yeah. <laughs> Dom, Dominic about. Um, 16 years old, he thought, I'll go on Twitter, uh, sorry, I'll go on Facebook, and I'll post a picture of my new born, like, three-day-old puppy, and it's, like, one of them hairless Mexican sausage dogs or something. Well, just look at the picture. Like, I had to do a double take. Like, first of all, it's a weird angle for a dog. At least get it. Mate, look at Uh, his fucking, look at his back, but those wrinkles, it looks like he's got a thumbprint on his back. Oh, it's mad, like. It's fucking mad. But like it's a fucking dog, like <laughs> it's a dog. It's what you know it, it's even it, funnier, but when you just accept the reality for a second that it's a knob, but then just look how lumpy. <laughs> it is. It look work at the skin it. under the fucking helmet, but look at how ring and fucking It's jumping. just a dog. It's just a dog. <sighs> And again, if you see the second picture, it'll clarify that it is a dog. It is indeed a dog. But, uh, it is indeed a dog. And then if you go down, you can even see its little Ooh, grotesque creepy, face. Yeah, yeah, it looks like something out of Pan's Labyrinth. But... <laughs> it looked like that naked mole rat from fucking Kim Possible, yeah. but... <laughs> Not on. But, um, but yeah, but it's like, it's like I say, like, I, I, we'll probably will get banned off Twitch now, I think. I it's all right, though. I, I, I don't care. I, I'll, I'll go back to Trick. Go back to drinking, it's fine. I've got a fucking pint of Bloody Mary, yeah? Mm. Living like Jim Leahy, man. <laughs> that would trade a pint point. I am the liquor, mate. Yeah. I've, I've been out of my fucking mind. I fell asleep on the balcony and just woke up covered in flies and shit like it. <laughs> <laughs> it's rough. He's been infested by the insects. In the garage at fucking 2am, like, killing scorpions with a fucking kitchen knife. What are you living? <laughs> it's been rough. It's been rough. <laughs> it's People been did- rough. <laughs> You deal with things in different ways, Sam. They will deal with things in different ways. Um, you were killing scorpions for a long time, mate. You've been trying to be fucking coyote ugly for ages. <laughs> so anyway, it is, it is another uh, just ridiculous story. Well, one of the things we cover a lot on the podcast is dumb crime. All right, People who just do horrible crimes, sure, but, but do stupid things within those horrible crimes. Yeah. So... Um, this this is a mind blowing story. This is like so fucking beyond dumb. It 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 it's like I I don't even know where to begin with this. Now I know where you're gonna go to immediately, Sam. You're gonna <laughs> laugh at you're gonna laugh at what the guy looks like. Now oh, don't do that. Be be better than that. Be better than that. But this is a story about a guy. Oh, I can't even read the... in my region, mate. That's it. Oh, you can't see it. Not fox blocked yeah, in my region. US uh, fox, only, I guess. What the fuck? Hang on, let me let me find you another. Well, just Google an alternative link if you want, mate. Just type in the story. I'm alright. Must... <laughs> <laughs> I'm alright. 
Fucking hell. All right, make me do it. Why is everything that got to be a travesty? Um, um, oh, yeah, it's that G that's what it is. Yeah, it's the GDPR thing because of the new data regulations. Fox hasn't updated it for European. Uh, all right, I see. Um, will this work? Let me see. KCRA.com. Let's see. Uh, yeah, yeah. It says it gave me something about privacy, so it should be okay. All right, is that it? Nope, not available in my region. Fuck me. Archive it's it. archive it. Is it really like that, is it? <laughs> like live archiving a stream with Richard Lewis. <laughs> live updates on the Scorpion battles. There's a new Fallout coming out. I'll be fucking ready for that. <laughs> hmm. Alright, well we'll come back to that story while the archive yeah. kicks in. Um it, here's another dumb crime. I, I, I queued up a few. This guy got arrested, and again, I know you're going to go straight to what the dude looks like, but this guy went to a playground uh, where there was kids, and he started shouting at the children, like, this is where babies come from. <laughs> your mum and your dad are fucking, you idiot. <laughs> And just look at him, though. Of all the things. I mean, if you showed me a picture of that fella and said, uh, guess what he was convicted for, I'd be like, oh, it's got to be something violent, gang-related, or, um, you know, like satanic even, maybe. Like, the, the facial tattoos, you know. But, uh, no, he, he's gone to jail um, and was fined $118 for shouting at children what sex is. It's fucking mad, isn't it? What a what a what a crazy <laughs> fucking thing. Um so anyway, right, let's see if this archives kicked in. <laughs> oh now I get sorry this content's not Wee. available in your It's a it's, uh, it, you know what, it's it's a sad, it's a it's an awful story. Yeah, let's skip it. Uh, so we'll just we'll come back to it. I'll wait for the I'll wait for next week. Uh let's talk about peak narcissism. Far be it from me to suggest that we're a narcissistic culture. That people have become so ridiculously self-absorbed with their own shit lives and, you know, how great they are. And, and here's my Instagram and here's my Snapchat. Here's me shouting on a bus. Here's me filming every little facet of my shit life. Um, it's like everything that people do has to take on this greatest significance now. Um, and personally, I... I've never heard of anything like this before. It might be peak narcissism. So this is a woman who went and got a tattoo, right? Like so far, so normal. She went and got a tattoo. And the tattoo was to commemorate her child, her, her, her son. Um, and um, not, not, new, not newly born, by, by the way. Uh, an existing son that was five years old. That's right. crucial to the story. Five years and old, okay. Five, a five-year-old child, right? <laughs> and she went and got a tattoo, and um, and it it was it, it, a kid's name is Kevin. Big Kev. Yeah, and she's got a daughter called Nova, so she wanted Nova and and Kevin as the tattoo. But the tattoo artist put Kelvin, <laughs> right? Which, just, just so you know. That's not, how is, can you not check before, and It is definitely Kelvin. <laughs> yeah, I, I, like, definitely when you're getting a tattoo, check if they're spelling it right while, while they're doing it. Uh, just check. Just have a lean over. Like, oh, wait, wait a minute, mate. That, know, is, that an, is, is that an L? And, um, I hope that's one fucking big N, mate, that you're going to be paying me back <laughs> yeah. my deposit. Yeah, do you know what I mean? Like, just just have a check. But fine, fine. Maybe you don't. Kelvin. Maybe you can't check. Um, but here's the thing. So, he put, as you can see from the picture, it, it, he put Kelvin. So, at that point, right, I, I, I'm just probably going to, like, not pay the tattoo artist. Maybe ask if they have can a clean it up. Yeah, maybe even make, sue. Yeah, you could make I, that big L into a big V somehow, man. You can make yeah, 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 something. You, you know, 
But she didn't do that. What she decided to do was get her son's name changed to Kelvin. Five years old. Well, he's already talking, already has friends, goes to school. He's been Kevin for five years, mate. <laughs> How does he explain he, now when he goes to school? He, yeah, like, I, like, hi, everyone. Hi, all my young friends in my formative years. I'm not Kevin anymore. I am now Kelvin. Well, why why's your mum change your name to Kelvin? Ah, she got a shit tattoo. Like she's just a bit mental. And, and she's like, who does that? Whose thought process is that? Like, just what are you do? Like, ah, oh, I will just alter my son's identity because I got a shit tattoo. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like, what next? Like, if you had a picture of him. And it came out like not looking like him. Did yeah, he, he get face, yeah. Did you give him facial reconstructive come surgery? On, come so on, looked, Kelvin. They do face transplants now. It'll be cool. Yeah. Yeah, you look a bit like Batman. Don't worry. We'll just glue this mask to your face. <laughs> It'll be fine. It'll be fine. This it, it is so bonkers. Sweden, of course. <laughs> I'm, I'm just just it's just Sweden, of course. Um. But but uh, she she justifies it. I think. Let me see if I can find the quote. Um, no 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 no. She, she even got offered laser surgery, and she just goes after thinking a little. We just decided to <laughs> rename it. Like what do you that, mean? Like like it was just a. It wasn't even a long thought process for it. It was just, uh, you know what? Yeah, we'll just, it's going to be easier, isn't it? So just one letter. Come on. Yeah. You haven't even got to do the paper, paperwork for that. You need to legally be Kev, but, you know, yeah. in real life, it's Kelv. You can't just fucking surrender five years of being a Kevin and then get an upgrade to the much cooler Kelvin. <laughs> he's got to, he's got to now be cool, but he's been five years of being called Kevin. Kevin's a fucking boring name. He's built the foundations of his identity on being boring. Now he's cool, Kelvin. Bit more exotic, isn't it? How is he going to adapt? Do I admit, cool, Kelvin. No one says cool. Hey, don't Kevin. get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. He's definitely had a fucking upgrade. Maybe that's why, mate. Maybe the kid said, I "Always want my name to be Kelvin anyway." <laughs> Still going to be weird, though. I, I, I don't know. <laughs> I, personally, I, I think. I honestly don't think parents should just do that. Like, just change the name of their child because of a misprint. I don't you know, like it's... getting tattoos of just names either. Like, I understand yeah. if you get a tattooed for your children, make it something. You know what I mean? Just their name. What the fuck's the point? We're on slippery ground here now because you know what will happen, Sam. We've all been in this situation. Well, you fucking you say something like that, and it seems innocuous enough, and then someone comes out and goes, "Oh well, I got the name of my son who died." Yeah, Am well, I in? Get whatever you want, mate. I'm just saying, I'm, if it was me, I'd have some shit. Um, am I an idiot? <laughs> you, you know what I mean? It always happens to me. Fuck yeah. I always put my foot in it. Like, you know. I believe this. Well, I have done exactly that. Am I an idiot? <laughs> it was just a joke. It was just a throwback to a conversation. Now everything's going to be awkward and weird for the rest of the night. Talk yeah. Fucking well. Clarence from the Big Life yeah. Show. <laughs> Fuck off, Clarence. Yeah, you know what I mean? Am I an idiot then? Am I a loser? Am I Richard by your almighty standards? Whatever. Um, I think I think I wanted to do one more fucking thing before we get in uh in, in the meat of the article the meat of the podcast rather um but but I, I i maybe not yeah fuck it let's just do it let's just do it so i said guess what guys it's going to be a journalism special now those of you who know me and it's weird because i actually got retweeted i think by by by, by elon today elon musk really? with his 20 million followers yeah he um he retweeted a he retweeted a tweet i'm embedded in all right We'll, we'll we'll get we'll get to all of that and how that came about. It's kind of a fucking weird thing, but um, and I keep calling him Ellen for some reason, which I, I need to get that verbal tick out of my brain. I'm always thinking of Ellen DeGeneres or something. Um, but anyway, those of you who know me know that I, I do take journalism pretty seriously. I've been a journalism a journalist for a long, long time. Uh, I, I, you know, journalism was what I always wanted to do. 
Um, I'd always hoped to be a better journalist than what I am, so I would be able to create some sort of profound work, but we're past that. It's never going to happen. It's fine. But it, instead, you know, I will just have to go to my grave knowing was the greatest esports journalist of all time. Now, that would have meant nothing, but esports is big now, so maybe it does mean something. Maybe it will mean something. That's it. Um, it's not great, but it'll do. It's better than nothing. So I'll take it. Um, and I, and I, 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 because I take it so seriously and it's so ingrained with my identity, I absolutely fucking hate what journalism has become. And I hate this new breed of journalists with like just a passion, like just, it, it's just hard to say and, and express in, in like a very astute manner, like how far journalism has fallen from the journalism I grew up with and aspired to do. Like the journalism we consume now, as a matter of fact, is absolute garbage. It is very, that there is so few good journalists doing good work, profound work, life changing work. And even the ones that do that, like Glenn Greenwald, good example. You know, I've talked to Glenn. We've had our Twitter exchanges. Glenn broke one of the biggest fucking stories with the whole Snowden thing. It's, it's one of the biggest stories of all fucking time that the American people being fucking systematically spied upon by parts of the American government, that their civil liberties were being fucking eroded. And, you know, Snowden is a fucking hero for exposing that. Uh, end of fucking discussion. End of discussion. What does the Constitution mean if you're going to let that one fucking slide? Your right to fucking privacy. Um, but Glenn Greenwald's also done some pretty shoddy work and went mental with Trump derangement syndrome like so many journalists did. And The Intercept had that fucking lunatic work for it. It was out there doing fake bomb fucking scares because he got dumped by his guy. You know, it's just like this can't be what journalism is these days. But but this is what it is. This is what it is. It, it It's Trump is evil. Even when, if we've got to make it up and lie, we're doing it. I, I saw, I can't remember the name of the dude. There was an experienced TV anchor who'd been a, a journalist for 35, 40 years. And you learn about things like at, at journalism school, like objectivity and, you know, giving everyone the right to reply and a fair shake. And you don't misrepresent their views and who they are. And you don't do agenda driven journalism. You could do advocacy journalism, and, you know, but you've got to make it very clear that that's what it is. And there's all these different types and it's all fine. But but what the press has become now is just outrageous. It's just so outrageous. This this 40, 40 year experience TV anchor said, I think it's okay to be biased against Trump because that serves the greater good. What are we what are we doing here? Like what are we doing? Like, does, that, does, does does none of it matter? Does the code of ethics just not matter? And it clearly doesn't. I see it every goddamn day. I see I, I see journalists just out and out lying, misrepresenting, cherry picking, and unfortunately, the the that journalists still have a, a pretty powerful position in today's society, even though the general population is becoming more and more fucking tired of the lies and the agenda and, and the mask slipping. I wanted to be a journalist because I wanted to serve the people. That sounded a bit like Bane there, didn't it? Like, you, the people. The people. But I did. I genuinely did. I try again. It, it's Esports is nothing. But if you look at the work that I did within it, it was always to give people a voice. It was to help people get paid. It was to expose corruption. But that's what I wanted to do maybe one day on a bigger scale. Because I, I do look at a, at a journalist as being a public servant. I know the economics of it are fucking complicated in an era of ad block, and you've got to write for clicks, and you've got to do this, and you've got to do that. You've got to get your paper, and you've got to get your publication's paper, or you don't get your paper. I understand all of this. I understand that not every piece you write will be a Pulitzer-nominated piece of solid gold. I've thrown out my fair pieces of filler and turd just to fucking keep the lights on. That's a reality. But what you absolutely should never do is find yourself straying across that fucking line where you're like, you know what's popular right now? Telling this lie. So I'm going to tell that lie and then we'll get the clicks and the attention for telling that lie. Like, it wants you, even if you stray into that territory, well, eh, I'm not going to lie, but I am going to exaggerate. 
or I hate this political candidate, so I'm going to interpret everything they say in the most uncharitable way possible for clicks because everyone's doing it. D d at that point, you've got to take that step back and go, is this what I want to be? Is this what I wanted to do with my fucking life as a journalist? And unfortunately, with digital media, it absorbed so much of the blogosphere that you've got a lot of people who don't actually give a fuck about the ethics. So they, they don't, they've never had any training. And they just want to, they just want to be some, somebody important. And they just, and you know, and they think they'll make the world a better place by just sort of endlessly banging on about what they believe is going to be better and presenting their opinions and worldview as a fact and trying to just, just you know, they, <clears throat> I want to inform my audience. I want to tell them things that they don't know and, 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 and hopefully encourage them to go away and look into it more. But if, if they don't even have the time for that, I will always try and pr present these. This is everything you need to know about this. This is all sides of the story. It, it, so you can just read the article. And, and that's what I want to do. I want to inform you. The new breed of journalist doesn't want to inform you. They want to lecture you. They want to sermonize from the pulpit of fucking wokeness and tell you how much better they are. That isn't journalism. That's never been journalism. That was never in journalism. 20 years ago, journalists didn't do that. This is a recent phenomenon. We have, we've just bastardized it. it it's gross, it, It's to use their words. It's so fucked up. And I don't know how we get back to real fucking journalism and real work. Because I'll tell you... Real journalists and, and journalists that want to try and present the opposite side of a story. Modern journalism's a fucking cartel, Sam. They run you out of town. They run you out of town. There's these like hot button topics, like you you know, and 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 you know, it's like it's like the dichotomy. Fox News is is rightly laughed at for being so you know so biased, but. The people that do the pointing and the laughing then go and watch CNN, <laughs> and like, and, and they don't understand. That it's like there's this cog the cognitive dissonance that it requires to watch something that's telling you, "Oh, I don't know." For example, you can't read WikiLeaks; it's illegal if you do that. But if we do it, it's okay. Demonstrably false in every fucking way, shape, and form. But. If you call out, if you call out a publication like that for its bias, which it inarguably is, they go, "Ah, oh, yeah, you're fucking right wing." Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like no, all sides of the media are just lying now. It's just bullshit. It's just there's just too much bullshit to wade through. You'll notice I haven't even talked in terms of left and right during this. I'm talking about journalists as a breed. I'm talking about the whole rotten industry. Right, left, centrist, whatever. So before we get into that, let's talk about one story. I'm going to lose some followers here, but fuck it. I'm down. I'm, I'm uh... Tommy Robinson. People have been messaging me about Tommy fucking Robinson. What, Richard, you're the only journalist with the balls to tell the truth about what's going on with Tommy Robinson. You, you, you'll stand up for Tommy. Let me tell you about Tommy, Tommy Robinson. Tommy Robinson is a fucking greasy thug, a piece of shit, not somebody I stand for. I've said on this show before... Uh, it made my skin crawl when I saw Tommy Robinson followed me on Twitter. It made my fucking skin crawl. Because I've been on the marches, right? You see, there's a difference. There is a difference between being right wing or what the EDL was. And I lived in Birmingham and I saw the EDL go down and harass Muslims doing nothing in Birmingham, just going to prayer. And I saw them harass it. I saw people try and vandalize mosques. I do not support that. And that's what the EDL was doing. And that's why people went on anti-fascist marches because those uh, that is what real fascists look like and do. <laughs> now Antifa goes and breaks up a free speech rally. Times have changed, people. But you'll never tell me that the EDL wasn't a bunch of racist fucking slime. And again, 
what you have to remember, yes, a stopped clock can be right twice a day. And in that sense, the EDL, who are a reprehensible group, full of, full of, I'll tell you exactly how the ED, the kind of people the EDL attract. I say that as someone who has spent time in the presence of the EDL, both as on marches against them as a journalist, or having the misfortune to drink in a pub where they are. The, right when football hooliganism got crushed, and it got fucking crushed in the UK. Started with Thatcher, but then there was all these other things that happened to sort of, you know, they, they, they brought in these laws that basically meant if you even went on a football pitch at one ground, you got banned for life because there was this perception that British football hooliganism was the worst in the world. Again, not true. Anybody who's seen Galatasaray fans from Turkey will tell you that. But the bottom line is that's what they did. So all of a sudden, the boot boys who didn't want to lose the right to go to a football match started getting into the dregs of political activism. Ex-football hooligans went and joined groups like the EDL. Tommy Robinson. Look him up. Used to have fights down at Luton Tan. Right? The fucking scummy <clears throat> boot boys. That were that were that had no place to go when the strict laws of fucking football hooliganism were passed in the UK suddenly decided they cared about politics and immigration. Yeah. Yeah. That's who the fucking EDL are. They were just a bunch of cunts spoiling for a fight. And as we all know, immigrants make a pretty easy fucking goddamn stereotype for your woes, especially in times of abject poverty. They're taking our jobs. Jobs you don't want to do. Jobs you're not even qualified to do, you gammon-faced prick. So fuck the EDL, which was founded by Tommy Robinson. And fuck Tommy Robinson, who is a thug. Tommy Robinson is not a journalist. I have seen so many people tell me, you're a journalist. You should stand up for a fellow journalist being persecuted. Oh, the persecution of Tommy Robinson who just keeps breaking laws. Imagine that, Sam. If you break a law, you, you get arrested. It's, it's fucking wild, isn't it? And all these fucking right-wing people coming to my fucking mentions and go, hey, he's like you. He's a working class lad who's a journalist. Tommy Robinson is not a fucking journalist. He adopted the mantle of be calling himself a journalist because he quickly realized, first of all, he can make money off it from fucking outlets like the Rebel Media or, you know, whatever. Second of all, if you're a journalist, it gives you a license to turn up to things that are happening. And getting people's faces. There's YouTube videos of him just having fights. And they're all selectively edited. So it just just always happens to start with people pushing old Tommy. And Tommy's the victim. This is a guy with convictions for fucking assault. He ain't no fucking angel. And I certainly wouldn't trust anything that they fucking edit together. So he, he calls himself a journalist to be an antagonistic little shit. And turn up to things like, you know, it, radical Islamic attacks in London and antagonize people who were fucking grieving, who were confused, scared on both sides. And then he goes, look at this. I'm being, I'm being persecuted. Only Tommy will tell the truth. Ah, he's not interested in the truth. He's interested in fucking attention and being in the fucking middle of conflict because he's still got the taste for that. And that's why it makes me fucking chuckle. Whenever he talks about, well, if I go to prison, I might get beat up. You don't have, a, there's a YouTube video from just a few days ago of him hitting a fucking immigrant in the face, claiming self defense, and it don't look like no self defense I ever saw. Anyway, he is not a reporter. People representing Tommy Robinson as a reporter are intellectually dishonest. Now, he did get arrested. He got arrested outside of Leeds Court. And um, I've got to be honest, when I saw. That Tommy Robinson got arrested. I thought, hang on a minute. Why, why has this happened? Why has this happened? And it was hard for me to find out it had happened. And, and why it happened and how it had happened. Because the only source on the story initially was Tommy Robinson's video itself. Which, again, 
and and that um Kalen Robertson or whatever his name is. And I was like, well, again, I'm going to take this with a liberal pinch of salt. Started with him, you know, just being put in a van. Go, can you get me a lawyer, please? Get me a lawyer, please. Get me a lawyer. Now, here's what happened. He was outside of a court in Leeds where there is an ongoing uh, case about uh, the, ch- the child sex grooming cases that happened in places like Bradford, Rotherham, Leeds. And there's some terrible police failings in that. And it, it is a terrible fucking case that was swept under the carpet because of politically correct culture there is no doubt about that by the way politicians were told to stand down for speaking up about it police told victims this is all a matter of record police told victims of child abuse to not talk about it because you know might be a little bit racist maybe you're remembering it wrong police officers everybody involved in that should be fucking sent to prison everybody involved in the case everybody involved in covering it up the police that were negligent but here's the thing if you care about justice and you care about getting justice for those victims which i do you don't prejudice a fucking trial and the reason you don't prejudice a trial is that can be grounds for acquittal you fucking moron And I can't believe that people are not talking about this. There is a separate debate to be had about whether or not there should be reporting restrictions around this case. And whether reporting restrictions do the the, uh, defendants a service or the victims a service. That's a debate. But no one's having that debate. The debate we're having is, oh, God, God, bleeding blimey, governor. Why is Tommy being persecuted again? 13 months in prison. All right. Well, first up, he was told last time he did this. He went to another case. Uh, I can't remember. I think it was Bradford. And he tried to film people going in and out of a court in a case where there were fucking reporting restrictions on it. Right? He fucking... (laughs) So he got arrested... For contempt of court, and he got a suspended sentence for it. And he was told, do not do this again. In no uncertain terms. Now, again, is that fair? I don't know. Should we have these reporting restrictions? Is it there to not prejudice the trial? Is it there to protect the victims? Is it there because we just want to ignore what a grotesque fucking failing it was? Who knows? Separate fucking debate. But I'm going to tell you, I understand the reporting restrictions. I'm going to tell you why they're there. And I'm going to show you the document, the legal document it comes from and why they do it. Um, so first of all, I'll, um, yeah, he has been sentenced to 13 months, right? But I will give you this, Sam. This is the uh, reporting restrictions. You can just have it in the background just to show people that it's real. I'm not just pulling it out my ass, but it talks about when a judge can impose reporting restrictions in the criminal courts on a case. This has been recently uh, updated, uh, so it's a two, it's 2016. Um, but basically, it, it says in no uncertain terms that in instances where people were minors, you have to put reporting restrictions on the case if, if you're a minor involved in a sex case to protect them. And that goes on for life. Now, obviously, if you're filming people going in and out of a court, sure, you might not want to film the family of the victim, uh, accidental glimpse of the victim, but he was doing a live stream outside of a court. You can't control who you're going to catch on camera. That's why these, that's why we're not like America. We don't televise our trials. Cameras being allowed in courtrooms is a relatively recent phenomenon in British justice. And again, I know that I've seen a lot of Americans talk about this and talk about how it's a fundamental violation of freedom. The British judicial system puts the fucking American courts to shame. Historically. You know, we actually react to grotesque injustices. That's why we took the death penalty away. So... This document here says 3.2 victims of sexual offenses, right? In, in any case dealing with a minor, 
reporting restrictions that last the entirety of the, the, the victim's life. It's a protection. But then on top of that, um, there are some other instances, right, which need to be, uh, you know, just highlighted here, right? First of all, everybody is entitled to a fucking fair trial. And if you're outside of a court filming people and talking about what has been reported in the newspapers or up until the reporting restrictions were imposed were reported, to basically talking as if these people are guilty, you have a chance to prejudice a trial. And as I've said, if, if for any reason a jury is prejudiced, it's grounds for a mistrial, possibly even an acquittal. You do not help the victims by going down and breaking these reports restrictions and um, these reporting restrictions kick in on a, on a, any case that a judge rules are necessary for and this can be from the moment a suspect is arrested when a arrest warrant is issued uh when a person is charged it's a little bit different in scotland i won't get into the minutiae of it um uh, basically this particular case because of the nature of it the sheer volume of people involved both victims and perpetrators this was given a blanket ban on reporting and tommy robinson knew that now i'll so he should never have been there and he shouldn't have been filming it now i saw in his defense he said oh i i thought that i'd read the rules correctly right well no not really um it it, it clearly fucking states that you right, that the court is not necessarily just the courtroom. It's the building itself. It's the road that's the court on. It's anywhere where people going into the court may be transported from. You can see this from the judge's ruling itself when they talk about these fucking, you know. And, and look, and it is a broad interpretation. And I am all for having a discussion about whether or not the judge should be interpreting it this broad. But this is from the legal document, and it says here um, that uh, under Section 41, to take or attempt to take in any court, meaning recording or uh, documentation or reporting of any kind, by which that means not only the courtroom, but also the building and the precincts, any photograph, irrespective of who that is a photograph of, and I refer in regard to the case of Her Majesty Solicitor General versus Cox in 2016, where it would appear that at least one of the defendants in that particular case had been taking photographs in court, but not of a particular party. This is the legal precedent that's in place to not prejudice your trials and protect victims. That's what we have in the UK. So it is inarguable that Tommy Robinson broke this fucking law. And the judge says there, it seems to me, on the reading of section 41, you have committed an offense under that section. And that's how I interpret it as well. It's very clear. Any attempt to take a photograph or recording of anybody going in and out of the building where the trial takes place is a violation of that law. That's it. It, it is cut and fucking dry. So, no. No. I do not fucking think that Tommy Robinson has been the victim of a great injustice. I think 30 months is incredibly lo a lo an incredibly long sentence for contempt of court. But this was a serial offender who was already serving a suspended sentence for the same thing, where you can argue leniency had been shown because of the mantle and tag of being a reporter. But... If you want to repeal these reporting restrictions, and if you think there should be no reporting restrictions and believe in a total free press, let's have that talk. I'm down for that talk. There's arguments both for and against. And certainly I would never support, I don't know, things like super injunctions like Ryan Giggs imposed on people when he was nobbing his fucking brother's wife and he didn't want anyone to know about it. So he used the power of the court to basically put a super injunction on anyone on Twitter. That is a, a violation of, of freedom of press and freedom of discussion that I think has no noble end and I would not support it. This is about s victims of sex abuse. It, it, it's go I, I can't believe that we're like, yeah, it, it's fine to go down and agitate and potentially poison the trial for that. It's not. It's not acceptable. I understand that there's a perception that this hasn't been as widely reported as it should, but that's because of the restrictions. As soon as the case is done, as soon as the sentences or lack thereof have been meted out, 
you get to report it. That's how it's been for every one of these cases. I, I, I literally do not understand this idea that, that Tommy Robinson has been the victim of a great injustice. And just to show you by the fucking way how racially uh, – just, yeah, fuck it, I'll say it. How racially charged his reporting actually is. Well, where was he on the steps of the fucking Old Bailey – when one of his old friends from the fucking EDL got jailed for 17 years for pedophilia, right? Member of the EDL, right? Lee McMillan groomed 10-year-olds and abused them and got 17 years in prison. And you can see the report here. I didn't see him on the steps there. I didn't see his passionate commitment to the truth uh, and 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 how uh, you know and making sure the faces of sex predators and perpetrators and everything else didn't see him on that fucking courtroom with a fucking live Facebook live stream going on. So yes, d please separate the broader debate about reporting restrictions or reporting restriction law in the UK in cases like this from the idea that Tommy Robinson was done an injustice as a journalist. He was not. He was already on a fucking suspended sentence for doing this repeatedly. He did it again. He, it's, it's very clear he understands why he shouldn't be doing this. Um, just to wrap this part of the show up, uh, I think there was, uh, where was it? Was it, was it this? Uh, yeah, here it is. Um, it was the f the first uh, uh, the reporting restrictions around the case have been dropped now, um, but Tommy Robinson's likely to still have a trial off the back of it. And the first newspaper to sort of break the silence, which wasn't in place, it had been reported in a bunch of it was in it was still in the Independent um, because of what was contained within it. Um, and you can see here what he offered uh, in. Um, sort of a defense uh his qc uh sort of the qc that uh, handed out the jailing for 30 months said no one could possibly conclude that it would be anything other than highly prejudicial to the defendants in the trial you know that you were filming outside of it i respect everyone's right to free speech that's one of the most important rights we have but with those rights come responsibilities the responsibility to exercise that freedom of speech within the law i am not sure you appreciate the potential consequence of what you have done it is a serious matter that you were also encouraging others to share what you were streaming live on social media, which, of course, once that happens, it can't be contained. All it takes is accidentally catching a picture of the victim and their fucking anonymity is just breached for life. I mean, a live stream makes it worse. It, it's, it's bonkers that people are trying to argue for this. And I saw there was a big march, free Tommy. Guys. Please, like, spare me this idea that that this was um, this was bad. Uh, the the uh, barrister for uh, Tommy Robinson said his client felt deep regret. Sure, that's why he keeps doing it. He was mindful, having spoken to others and taken advice not to say things that he thought would be actually prejudicial to these proceedings. He did not try to cause difficulties for the court process. Just potentially filming people's anonymity and, and you know, everything else. Madness. So, we'll move away from that. But like I say, don't come to me, don't tweet at me telling me he's some fucking modern hero. He, he is slime. And he always has been, he always will be. And I'll, I'll, I'll speak out if I think he's been unfairly treated. I'm pretty sure at some point in his life he has been unfairly treated, honestly, because of who he is and what he is. This wasn't one of those times. So we're, we're going to continue now. We're going to get on to journalistic accountability. This is what we're going to start talking about today. There is a problem within journalism. Journalists do not fact check. Journalists frequently editorialize and present it as facts. Journalists are basically activists with a publication to use as a pulpit to speak from. So I'm just going to give you some examples. Journalists, they like to believe. We give a voice to the disenfranchised. We're always out there. Vice, Vice, one of the chief offenders, by the way, I can't wait for that publication to get shut down. Um, they actually, um, oh, hang on, that's the wrong link. 
I'll, I'll give you this one. They actually did another article on PewDiePie. PewDiePie is routinely called out Vice, by the way. And Vice kind of showed just how kind of petty and biased they are by continually writing these articles about PewDiePie. This is outrageous. PewDiePie even tweeted that he was thinking about suing them. Uh, he probably just won't go through with it. It's such a massive ball ache. But the headline here, um, and just to give you some background, PewDiePie used the word thought. Right now, Sam, you're familiar with thought. Yeah, it's just word. like a meme, isn't it? I was yeah. like, well, "Begone, thought." Is not like mm. a vine or something. Thought. Uh, when it first came, when when the word first came into common usage, it was an acronym for that hoe over there. All right. Now we also know that the word hoe doesn't necessarily mean a prostitute in colloquial conversation. So if you call somebody a thought, you're not saying they're a prostitute, but you are implying that maybe they got some, you know, loose morals, if I'm being ungenerous with my interpretation, or you're using the word hoe to describe a woman, which is kind of a loaded misogynistic term in and of itself, but whatever. So the word thought, though, I think, has sort of just entered into the, as you say, the meme of vernacular. I don't think people think about what they're saying when they say it. And I think now it's basically used to describe uh, a woman who accentuates her charms, her features, her physical attributes. Right? Yeah. And people just say it on Twitch and on, you know, whatever. Look at the thought. Yeah. I look, and again, my views on the booby streamer outrage are very fucking clear. If you have a problem with a woman making money of wearing... Uh, and a, a top that shows off cleavage, you're probably a demented incel cunt and you need to have a hard look at your life. Like, seriously, I, I, I never understood it. Like, when I used to go, like, live stream fail, um, used to see, uh, you know, just all these fucking ridiculous, you know, people just obviously you know, need a fucking wash, <laughs> you know. Um, and they're, they're, they're just, uh, oh, God, this is so unfair. Like, Twitter... These booby streamers are attracting the people who could be watching real streamers. They're not, though, are they? It's two different things. That's like saying pornography is killing the fucking movie industry, you fucking demented assholes. Like, what is wrong with you? They're two different fucking things. They're two different things that are vaguely tangentially linked. That's how they fucking think about this thing. It's just dumb. So I've never had a problem with it. Never had a problem with it. I don't care. I don't care even if, like, you know, fucking Twitch are just sort of going, look, we're getting mass reported about, about this, but we're just not going to do anything. If there's any corruption, all right, if there's actual corruption, if there's actual examples of people breaking Twitch terms of service and Twitch staff taking, like, nudes in exchange to not ban them, I, I'll be all over that. And that's the theory that they all peddle, and there's no fucking evidence. And they're out there attacking Twitch staff about it. It's fucking stupid. I don't know. Tell you what, right? I guarantee you half these incel cunts who go, booby streamers are going to kill Twitch. They're going to kill Twitch. I bet if you asked them, what's your thought about the burqa? Huh, how dare you cover up women? <laughs> right, well, I'll... Yeah, Islam's crazy covering up their women. <laughs> You're contradicting yourself, you mad bastards. That's the fucking, that's the level of discourse around this. So anyway, PewDiePie said, he did this thing, which, again, maybe it's fucking misogynistic or whatever, I don't know. Like, he was doing this thing where he was using the eye tracking. He did a video, he's like, doing the eye tracking to basically see if he could not be uh, drawn to a woman's cleavage or ass or whatever. Like, it's a little bit of, it's a, it's hilarious fun. Okay, so in, he was bringing up videos, and as he was getting tempted to look away, he's he's, a, he's engaged now. Um, he uh, he, he would you know his, his eye, the eye tracker would be like, oh, it would hover over the boobs or it would hover over the ass, right? And he said something like, "Oh my god, these twitch thoughts," and that was that. And he happened to fucking do it while a female streamer called Alinity was on, and what Alinity decided to do. And immediately said it, like, making herself one of the most thoroughly unlikable. But she couldn't have worked harder to make herself unlikable. She was there just sort of, like, it was mad. It was like some sort of, uh, sort of female interpretation of the Godfather. She was kind of just like a bowl of spaghetti. Like, 
And uh, she went, oh, my God, did he just call me a fat? And then she turned around to shout at, I don't know, her imaginary fucking friend. Uh, Can we copy strike PewDiePie? Because he called me a fat? Now, obviously, copyright. Oh, and apparently, sorry, I've even got this wrong. Apparently, I, 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 this is how t- terrible journalism, and I'm doing a thing about journalism. Apparently, she wasn't even in the original video. So, so she she uh, she just got upset by him using the word thought. I, I thought she was in the video. I thought that's why she was watching him doing it, and she felt he'd called her a thought. I thought that's what. Uh, well, whatever. Anyway, it's even worse if she just objected to She was in the video, but not when he said thought. Right, yeah, there you go. I knew it. I knew I was right. So, yeah, she was in the fucking video. Motherfucker's trying to fake, hey, call me fake. Me. Yeah, I'm listening to Twitch chat. She'd never do that. So she was in the video, and because he said the word thought in a video she was in, even though she, I don't think she was on screen, screen at the time he said it, um, she was like, can we copy day? Uh, I don't know what copy strike is. Maybe it's a fucking shit sequel <laughs> counter strike. <laughs> copy strike about people in the office. Um, and and she then tried to basically abuse copyright law to have the video taken down. Right now. Rightly so, PewDiePie said this is bad because the DMCA isn't valid and people shouldn't abuse copyright law. By the way, if you're a content creator and you willingly abuse copyright law, you're a massive piece of shit because I guarantee you if somebody came to you and used a fucking strike against you to take your content down, you'd be crying about it for fucking ever. Because we all know these automated systems, they don't favor the content creator. They don't, they, they, you've got to prove yourself innocent. You're guilty right from the fucking start. So they did a fucking, so he, he called her out for that. And I, I think that's perfectly reasonable by the fucking way. I think it's perfectly fucking reasonable to say that men, women, Black, white, we all should just be held to a standard of behavior. And we shouldn't adjust that standard of behavior and say, well, it's worse for you because you're a white male. You're a woman, so we're going to let you get a pass for that. I don't think that way. I think we should all be good to each other and all have a minimal level of behavior. And we should treat people just on that basis, right? Vice don't think that. And Vice, who've had this long-standing feud with PewDiePie, literally published an article saying that because PewDiePie called out Alinity, he is encouraging his audience to be rapists. Yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> sorry. Hey. Yep. Sorry. Yeah, fucking sorry. Um, and, and you'll go, Richard, that's, that surely they didn't say that. Let me tell you, the headline is PewDiePie is teaching his audience that women are asking for it. Now, the word rape appears nowhere in this article, but let me tell you about what journalists do. Journalists use loaded terms. Back when I studied sociology, there was this thing called semiology, right? We, separate thing within it. And semiology is basically, it's the, it's signs, okay? And it, 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 symbols and signs, and there is like a, a shorthand, a mental shorthand that you immediately understand when you look at something. You immediately understand it. Um, and I guess a lot of that is now kind of in memes, like memetic shorthand that, you know, if I show you a picture of Pepe the Frog, you know, before all this... Alt right nonsense. Feels good, man. Yeah, we know feels good, man, or feels good, feels bad, man. There were, there, there's like fifty other things attached to it all happening at once, and to, to the uninitiated, it just looks like a picture of a frog. But to you, who's involved in memetic culture, you understand it. Well, that's sort of an example of semiology at work. And the same thing goes with loaded phraseology. Now, let me tell you, as somebody that uh, is, has grown up, my mother used to do. Um, Victim support, it's called victim support. It's where you would work with local police forces to basically offer counseling 
and um, assistance to people who've been victims of particular crimes. My mother used to be a, a, a rape counselor, basically. And um, I've always been brought up with a sort of sensitivity to that particular issue. Uh, you know, single mother, you know, and, and um, left left a lot around other single mothers' houses. You know, I've, I've seen the black eyes um, in working class communities and it all just gets swept under the carpet. And one of the things that you will always hear is they were asking for it. You know, this is one of the things rapists have historically said. It's if I if I was to talk to anybody and and, and use the phrase uh, they were asking for it, what would you think I was referring to? Rape, rape would immediately spring to mind, wouldn't it? Yeah. I'm not just making that up. No, 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 that's the thing I said. Yeah. yeah. So when you use this particular phrase, uh, women are asking for it. The it is sex against their will, typically. So why on earth you would use... Well, again, I know why. But if, if, if you unwittingly un, you know, use that phrase, and so it wouldn't take you long after that was published for someone to tell you, uh, you know, when people say asking for it, they're usually talking about rape. And you would go, oh my God, no, no. I don't think PewDiePie is educating his audience that women deserve to be raped. Oh my God, that's fucking insane. No shit. Fuck, I better change that headline. No, they're not doing that. They are leaving that headline deliberately because of the loaded phraseology within it. Rape culture, you see. Again, rape not mentioned anywhere in it. Sex assault not mentioned anywhere in it. But that phrase is just there. It's just a maggot. And it just worms its way into your fucking brain and it sits there while you read the article. This is how journalists operate. I know they do this on purpose. I, I, I've been trained in the same way. I know. I can see through it. So the article is actually just saying, hey, um, what he's really saying women are asking for is to be abused and harassed. Now, PewDiePie has since done a video r responding to this, saying, well, that's complete nonsense. N never have I asked for it. And I've, and I've said that it's actually horrible when people get harassed. And um, I don't support it. I, 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 but it's the internet. It's going to happen, man, woman. And in that video, he also elevated another female streamer who agreed with him. And she's, like, gone viral and, you know, Got like a million views on a video she did or something. But um, the situation got worse, you see, because, again, why this rests with PewDiePie, and this is going to be a, a common thing because we're going to see it with Elon Musk, why PewDiePie is responsible for how far everyone takes it after he talks about his shit, I do not understand. I do not understand that. Right? I've uh, I've said it. If I if one of my Twitter followers at some point in my history, because obviously followers come and followers go, if one of my Twitter followers was a murderer, and you came to me and said, "Hey, well, he followed you. He's one of your followers, and he murdered somebody. You're res you're partially responsible for that." I'd be like, "Get fucked. That's madness." So, what happened was Alinity um, ended up. Somebody found a clip of of her. Basically saying that she had married to get a uh, equivalent of a green card in Canada. That it was just sort of a throwaway marriage to facilitate that. And people had been tweeting, um, saying, "We're going to get you. You know, we're going to call Canadian Immigration Control and everything else." And again, I, I find it interesting that the premise of the article is that it is somehow on PewDiePie because his fans found that clip and then said they were going to report her, not a lenity for publicly saying that. It, it's like this complete absolution of responsibility. And they reached out to a lenity, and you'll notice they don't, uh, they only reach out to her. They, they're not interested in a, you know, a sort of a d debate with both parties involved in it all. And Alinity said, and you see the quote here, uh, after, uh, over five years of streaming full-time, the hate from angry men has gotten worse and worse. It shifted from the viewers being perverts 
to just straight up calling me a whore. A lot of love for our audience. They used to just be perverts. <laughs> I like the perverts. Rather aggressive, angry perverts. They're trying to control my body. People telling me how I should dress and how I should act. They're trying to diminish my value by saying this is just what you are and you should get out of here. As if, as if nobody has ever attacked PewDiePie. You know, sure, not on those grounds, but for similar grounds, and been equally vitriolic and hateful, and you know, as if it doesn't happen to every public figure. Um, but I, but again, what what I struggle with is just sort of the kind of tone of the article, right? Um, it, it's just madness. To to sort of lay it all on the doorstep of PewDiePie, and then also use the headline that basically implies PewDiePie is teaching his audience that rape is okay. That is not. And, and 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 again, you can't just blame the journalist for that. Very often, journalists don't even set their own headlines. That is an editorial choice by Vice to put that there. It, the the responsibility for that rests with the editor, not the journalist. So the publication is quite happy to have that implication there, and I think that's grotesque and irresponsible. But again, that, that I'm sure Vice think they're doing a great thing. That's Vice, by the way. Uh, Vice with their history of covering up sex abuse uh, in in their own company, <laughs> which, uh, you know, it kind of seems to me uh, maybe something that, you know, our Vice Media, with their culture uh, encouraging, you know, saying that women are asking for it. You can go Google this as well if you want, Sam. There's a quick uh, link. There were several uh, allegations about the toxic culture at Vice Media where women were routinely sexually assaulted, sexually abused, harassed, and demeaned. You know, maybe get your own house in order before you talk about the wider and broader implications of what PewDiePie secretly kind of means, maybe just a little bit. Just a fucking thought, by the way. Um, but no, fine. Let's, um, let's move on. Another journalist. This is, this is outrageous, Sam. This is out fucking rages. I have seen some pathetic attempts to demonize people. I, I recently wrote um, an article on, on the website called Gorka's Glass House. Uh, a lot of people know about it. This is where they basically tried to monster Jacob Wolf because he'd used the word fag before. Now, again, uh, and I, I shouldn't say it because it's going to get clipped and taken out of context, but I'm tired of having debates about words and not being able to use the words. I'm exhausted by that. Right, that that's what he said. I am not saying it in a homophobic context. And it's also worth noting, for a British person, fag does not mean the same as the other one with the got at the end. It doesn't mean that. Fag and faggot are two different things. And always have been historically. Don't believe me? Go look this up. Fag a fag is not a homosexual in British culture. All right. This is absolutely true. Um when you go to boarding school, the you know, and well, you know, the private schools. We used to call them boarding schools because you live at the school. Uh, how we used to work at like Eton and places like this, they had this thing called fagging, right? This is absolutely true. Fagging is where an older boy, a second year or above, is given a first year boy to do all of his chores, shine his shoes, make his bed, put ice in his fucking brandy i don't know but that's and, and, and that kid is your fag he fags for you that is what the, this this is a term that has existed for hundreds of years when you know and, and obviously entered the vernacular and it had nothing to do with sexuality and everything to do with masculinity and dominance you know, because if you're a fag, you are the runt. You are the person that fetches and does the chores. We've just got to pretend that that doesn't exist. We've just got to pretend. We've just got to pretend that hundreds of years of private school, that's the, the most elite people in Britain, prime ministers, politicians, investment bankers, who all went through a process called fagging, were at one point themselves probably fags. We have to pretend that didn't happen. 
because American upper class privileged elite journalists don't like the word anymore. It doesn't mean that. Right? Side issue. Anyway, they right. If you run an advanced Twitter search on anybody who is now a public person that has the same Twitter account from the period where they were not a public person, you will find things that will mortif like, that are mortifying, that will embarrass them. You'll find j inappropriate jokes with friends. You will find the bad words. You can do this for anyone. I demonstrated it. I went through the history of all of the staff associated uh, with Gorka. And I found them using the bad words, the F words, the C words, which they tried to say was a slur. They literally tried to make out that the, the, the word cunt was as bad as the N word, right? It's not. Uh, it never will be. Um, but they'd all use these words, and it's like, right, guys, like, do, do you see the problem? Advanced Twitter search, not journalism. Trying to do a gotcha on somebody, saying something to another friend through the medium of Twitter, pathetic. Where are you going to draw the line? Well, the Atlantic, this is the most pathetic attempt at monstering anyone I've ever seen, and what a target to choose, right? So there is a guy... Uh, called Mr. Beast. Uh, now, you're up on your YouTube. Do you know Mr. Beast? No, I'm not. I don't really watch YouTube that much anymore, to be honest, mate. I'm a bit of a fucking loser, but just sort of chill out now. Easy you're life, a mate. You're a loser because you don't watch. You no, know? nah, that's what I mean. I just fucking live my life, mate. Don't even go on social media that much anymore, mate. Kind of got old. Mm. Um, well, Mr. Beast is basically... he he the gimmick is he is uh youtube's biggest philanthropist he basically gives away hundreds of thousands of dollars that's what he does nice guy uh, nice guy right nice fucking guy I mean, it's 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 probably a gimmick to go viral and stuff and he can almost certainly afford oh, yeah. it obviously there's something in it for him but it's still a nice way yeah. to do it if you're gonna make exactly. it YouTube, considering not? we've had youtubers on this show that are poisoning fucking homeless people and feeding people their own shit for <laughs> clicks I'll fucking take that, actually. You know, don't go after those guys. Let's go after the guy who's given money away to charity and giving them and, and money to individuals. And he's given away half a million in money. And he films it and he films the reactions. Uh, and he anyway, the Atlantic decided that th it was somehow in the public interest, which is another key component of journalism. Do the public need to know this? Is the public served by me publishing this? Well, this does not do anyone anything at all. It is a disgrace that this article is still up. A disgrace. Right? They went through his Twitter history. Can you guess what they found? Right. Bad they are, words. Right? The headline is, he has a history of homophobic comments. Well, I was expecting him to say some pretty raw shit. I was expecting him to say, I hate the gays, kill the gays. Yeah, some like you know, rap whatever. lyric level shit. Yeah, 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 exactly. You know, like DMX. Like old school Eddie Murphy delirious shit. Wild. <laughs> it's mental, oh. isn't it? Every time I go back and watch that, I don't want one of these homos looking at my ass and shit. Like, whoa, 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 Eddie, calm down. <laughs> worst thing, the worst thing Eddie Murphy said in that, like, I, I, it's the point where I always turn it off because Thorin's always telling me, yeah, Eddie Murphy and Roar and Delirious straight fire. And I'm like, I can't it watch fire, it no more. You got to ignore, yeah, exactly. You got to ignore the mental bits. Luckily, I can't, I can't. Because you know Eddie Murphy's like turning the corner now, or at least we think he isn't like that anymore. You can He's... sort of go back and go, yeah. I, 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 yeah, but it's like, okay, so one minute I'm laughing about the whole Mr. T being gay thing. Yeah. Yeah. And don't you come too quick. I'll rip your dick off. <laughs> like, you know, that, that, right? How would you like to fuck me in the ass? <laughs> well, those two guys again. Right? Like, that's pretty funny. But then the bit where he goes, like, um, I don't like it when women are hanging out with homosexuals. Yeah, get that AIDS they on their lips. And they get AIDS yeah. on their lips. Yeah, so, yeah. Hey, what's wrong with you? Like... It's fucking unacceptable. It's the unacceptable. thing is, you've got to kind of look at the joke. It's like, I put myself in the mindset where he obviously knows that ain't true. So he's saying it because it ain't true. You know what I mean? Like, fuck around, Can't. come home. Because he says it like, Joe, like, fuck around, come home with that AIDS on their lips. Like, is that it real? Is <laughs> I mean, it's mental. Lips. 
<laughs> mate. It's mental. It's so bad. Like, it's, it's not mental. funny. So, anyway. Um, so, we'll, we'll get back to this article. I know she took it down. You can bring it back up. Um, so, they, they went they went in and they, they, they went through his entire Twitter history. And the headline is homophobic comments, right? So, to be homophobic is to have a, a prejudice towards gay people. We would agree with that, right? That's a fair summary of what homophobia is. I know these days leftists the liberals they all want to rewrite what words mean and no oh, but it's privilege times power divided by fucking whiteness and all. it's all this nonsense homophobia is a commonly accepted word to basically say that you uh, have an irrational prejudice towards gay people so homophobic comments therefore would have to be some form of judgment or hateful statement towards gays right Here's the comments he made, right? These are the homophobic comments of YouTube's biggest, um, biggest uh, philanthropist. It says here, what people might consider not so nice are the homophobic jokes Jimmy has made on his YouTube channel or his habit of calling people fags on Twitter. So he's got a habit, right? So his, his hab habit is twice in two years he's used the word fag. And again, remember the word fag, I don't consider it anywhere near as bad as if you add the got at the end. It, it means something very different to me at culturally. At the same time, you know, you grew up in Britain, mate. We, when people used that word when I was a kid, we didn't mean yeah. gay people, but that's not yeah. what when you were saying fag. Yeah, fag is men kids. It's, it's like, it's like oh, come for a game of football. Oh, I can't today, but I've got to clean your soul with a fag. It's not, we're not calling them gay, you know, you're just like... Oh yeah. We've, well, no, but it's I mean, a different. But as, 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 as I said, fag has always been directly tuned into masculinity. You know, like you say, you're the cunt who shines my shoes. You, yeah. you know what I mean? That's what it's always meant. I I I'd never even really grasped until like much much later when I started doing this for a living that it even had a broader connotation. <laughs> like seriously. Yeah, same. Um, once I grew up, that I realized, oh, I guess can't yeah. use that word anymore. Then. <laughs> hey. But anyway, um, so once in 2017, he said STFU, fag. And then the other in this habit, this long habit he's got, um, in 2016, he said, I don't have a printer, fag, to a friend. Wait, do you know what's mental? He says it every Christmas, but in December 2015, he said Windows is gay. In December 2016, he said, I don't have a printer fag. In December 2017, he said, shut the fuck up. I, I was going to come at this. One of the things she's trying to portray as homophobic is he called, he said Windows is gay. <laughs> it's an operating system. How? That's gay. That's gay. <laughs> <laughs> And that's it, though. That's it, though. That's the whole homophobia. He's given half a million dollars to good causes. He's changed people's lives for the good. Yeah. He said fact twice and said Windows is gay. And you're running an article up about him. What does it serve? I saw one of the well, people he gave money to was a lesbian couple as well that tweeted in defense of him saying like, oh, I guess I shouldn't have taken this money from this disgusting homophobic man when he gave me 50 grand to be my lesbian partner. Right. So let's 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 talk about the public interest. Right. If. OK, so let's say he was, I don't know, um, a, a teacher. Right. And he persistently used words that were homophobic racist well yeah this is a problem this might very well be in the public interest to to expose this individual if this person was i don't know let's say he held a job where he was i don't know he presided over a bank for gays i don't know I, uh, it's so hard to find a specific thing where this would enter into the public interest. But let's say this YouTuber, he he, he, he was a bank manager in a bank that had an unnaturally high amount of gay people applying for loans and he hated gays. And he was going, oh, fuck, fuck this, and you're getting your fucking loan. I don't know what you're going to spend it on, right? Gayness. Let, then, yeah, it's in the public interest to expose that. This is not in anyone's public interest whatsoever. YouTuber who donates money to charity as his gimmick used the word fag twice. 
well, what happens now that we all know that? Take his platform away. Stop him giving money to charity. Like, he's just going to be there one day. Like, oh, here you go, homeless man. Here's $100,000. Get yourself back in the beat. Stop that man. He, he said fag. Stop him. Stop him improving the life of that homeless person. What? What? What is the purpose here? What? This absolutely... The editor that signed off on allowing this article to be published should be utterly ashamed. The, 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 the company that owns this publication should go to that office today and what the fuck are you doing? What the fuck are you doing running this? It makes you look like a laughing stock. I, he's 20 years old as well, by the fucking way. Just want to put that out there. Like... Uh, it's weird how everyone else gets to play the victim. He's still a kid. Not everyone copes with being in the public eye particularly well. But he hasn't even... This is not wrong. I am sorry. I'm going to nail my colors to the mask here. I am not going to fucking... You, you cannot condemn this person as a homophobe for saying Windows is gay. It is mental. It is mental to make that leap. And why... And again, I would if I was an editor... And the journalist slid this along the desk and went, I've got some straight fire for you here. Straight fire. Okay, what is it? It's a story about a 20-year-old YouTuber, and he's a homophobe. Okay, interesting. Why is his um, homophobia relevant? Uh, obviously, we understand homophobia is not nice, not pleasant, and no you know, right-thinking, logical, decent human being would hold those prejudicial and hateful thoughts. We all know that. But, but why is it relevant to the story? Ah, well, he's a big YouTuber. Okay, not quite seeing it. Uh, he donates money to charity. It's interesting, I suppose. So he's, he's famous in a way. Yeah. Um, you've left out that he donates charity to lesbian couples. Yeah, yeah, that doesn't fit the narrative. Just listen, right? He's said Windows is gay. Not so Windows. I, so I'm going to say that he um, uh, is a homophobe. Yeah, listen, uh, I think we need to have a talk uh, about what journalism is. And um, we're gonna, we're, gonna, we're not going to publish this. I'm going to put this in the bin, all right? We're going to throw this in the trash, and we're going to send you away to be re-educated in the basics and fundamentals of journalism because you don't understand it, because this is not a public interest story. This isn't a story at all, actually. Get the fuck out of my office. That is what a responsible editor would have done and said. Yeah, but that, that didn't happen. And it didn't happen because journalists they just don't give a fuck anymore. They're out of control, mate. They can say and do what they want. I'm going to show you something else that is absolutely outrageous just to give you a fucking example. Because now we're going to segue into Trump. Oh, you thought there was going to be no Trump this episode? Well, how can there not be? I'm talking about journalists. All these cunts talk about is fucking Trump. You review games for a living. What does Far Cry 5 say about the world of Trump? Yeah, you know? scribble notes in the Trump era. Like, fucking get me out! Get me out! Why? What happened to fucking escapism? Can I play a fucking game? Has anyone noticed that Volley Bear is the same build as Donald Trump? Fucking stop! Stop! It's games. You want to write about politics? Fuck off! Go do it. No one's stopping you. Oh, wait, no, you're stopping yourself because you're fucking incompetent, you fucking momos. I can't believe it. <laughs> anyway, uh, blood pressure. Cholesterol. It is, mate. For fucking four or five days on the fucking shandy. <laughs> Heart's going like the clappers, Sam. It's 88 degrees. <laughs> fucking hell. We're sweating. Oh. We're sweating in the name of the Lord. We're sweating. We're sweating. Right. So this is a tweet. This is a tweet because Trump's evil, obviously. Everything he does is evil. Now, I think I've made my view on Trump clear down the years. Uh, I don't think he's a racist. Sorry. Uh, I don't think there's ever been any evidence to suggest he is an actual racist. Um, I think he's a clod. I think he is a clod. I think that's the best way to describe him. I think he's not the most intelligent president we've ever had, um, although he's definitely smarter than George Bush. Um, George W., that is. Um, I, I think that he's arrogant, conceited, 
I think that he has no tact or sensitivity, but I also do believe he's going to get some things done that long term are going to be good for America. Sorry, I know this means I'm a Nazi now. Sorry, sorry, I'm a Nazi now. But trying to take a nuanced stance on Trump. What I should have done is got on the fucking bus with all the journalists and everyone else. This is the worst thing ever. I'm with her. I'm with her. Did I mention I'm an unbiased reporter? I'm with her. Fuck me. Don't talk about those emails. Butter emails. Hashtag butter emails. What is this gibberish? Like, why did it? Why? I don't even know when it happened when Trump literally became like the devil incarnate. It was weird. It, 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 even there was a, even a period during the election where it wasn't this bad, but when people realized, like fuck, he's he's won the nomination. Shit, he's still in the race. Fuck, that was it. Just went into overdrive, and everybody just got on board. It was like it, it, it was like mass hysteria. You know, it's like um, you ever seen that phenomenon where if, if somebody like when, when people are, like on cruise ships or in isolated communities and someone says, "Oh fuck," and they start like spewing and they go, "Oh, I think I've got a bowler, I've got a bowler or something," right? And then everyone else, Ill, yeah. Yeah, everyone else gets like the symptoms, and it's all psychosomatic. That's like what happened with Trump. It was literally just some like mass psychosis just descended, and it, it sure it was portions of the population. But it it went through the press like a fucking bushfire, Sam. It, went, it, 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 it dro drove all the fucking press mad. It drove them mad. <laughs> it drove them mad. And now they're just mad and there's no accountability. Check a look at this picture. This is Antonio Arellano. He just tweeted this the other day. Antonio Arellano of KTRK TV. Uh, Houston, Texas, I believe he's based. He posted this just the other day. Look what it says. ISIS largest family detention center, Carnes County Residential Center in Texas, is run by a contractor, GEO group, has a prison bus just for babies. And he put a picture of it. There's a slight problem with this, Sam. Do you know what that is? A picture of? It's a school bus. It's a state-of-the-art school bus for school trips, Sam. <laughs> It's a good thing that bus exists. It's not a prison bus for babies. It's a state-of-the-art school bus that actually cost the state thousands and fucking hundreds of thousands of dollars to have. What are you tweeting that out for? Had to delete it. Had to retract it. Damage is done. People think ICE are literally out there imprisoning children. <laughs> no, actually, though, no. <laughs> really, um... There was there was these photos that were, were dis distributed, and um, horrifying pictures. I, I want to say this: no child should be in a fucking cage, unless they're crying on the back of an airplane. Because <laughs> fuck those kids. But in general, no kid should be in a cage. So these photos started doing the rounds of kids in a cage, and they were lying down. And it was all part of this media narrative that was going on this week about what's going on with ICE separating children from their parents. And what they do is they imprison them. Okay, So whoever did this dredged up some photos of literally two children lying down. Uh, in, in, in a cage. And people have gone, this is Trump's America. This is what ICE is doing. We are imprisoning children. I'm going to show you Sean King said it. Talcum X in the fucking his house. Here it is. Here's the picture. Horrible picture, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, I saw this photo floating around and I didn't know if it was real. It is. And I'm shocked too. Sam, uh, again, children of immigrants being held in cages like dogs at ICE detention centers, sleeping on the floor. It's an abomination. It is. I agree with you for once, uh, Sean. I, I, I do. It is a fucking abomination that this happened. Uh, CNN reporter, Hadass Gold. These are just ones that I picked off randomly. Uh, here it is. Br bring this up. Um, first photos of separated migrant children at holding facility. Again, shocking photos. Rightly reported by a major news network, because this shouldn't happen. This is gross. Jake Silverstein, the editor-in-chief of the New York Times, an editor, an editor-in-chief, tweeted this out. All of these photos are disturbing, but the first two are especially awful. Adding weight to it. 
Now, there's a slight problem, Sam, and it's not the fact the kids are in the cage. Oh, is it going to be what... that's not the picture, mate? Are they not at a nice detention centre? Oh, no, they are. <laughs> okay. 2014. Oh, now, right then. Oh, now, I'm well, gonna... Obama was in charge, was this? Let me just check my calendar. I'm just going to bring up my calendar. calendar. Uh, 2018, 2017... 2016. When did Trump get in? It must have been 2014. It must have been. Well, These pictures no. are from 2014. They're saying about it Trump. Was, apparently, apparently, before Donald Trump, there was this guy, um, uh, uh, Barack Obama. His name was Barack Obama. He was he was president before Donald Trump, and um, yeah, apparently. Uh, it was done on his watch. <laughs> it was actually the Obama administration that were putting the kids in the cages. Now, you want to know what's wild about this? All right. These journalists got called out on it real quick. Do you want to know what's really fucked up? The date was in the, uh, of the photo was in the article. <laughs> journalists, ladies and gentlemen. But, but not only that, they got called out and then they had to retract it. So... Uh, uh, so they okay let's 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 do that let's do a retraction let's tell the people the truth i'll give you just one example of the retractions because i'm conscious of time um here we go mr fucking silverstein uh said uh this link which was flying around earlier today is from 2014 Still disturbing, of course, but only indirectly related to cur the current situation. My bad for retweeting without closer inspection and implying by timing that it's current. Um, you'll notice he only has 43 re retweets and 89 likes on that when the original tweet he deleted had tens of thousands. That's fine. Um, but you will notice in no nobody said, uh, no, no, the, the, the name Obama was not used. <laughs> anywhere in the retraction is, is if somehow you could uh, it's not current it's 2004 it's a different fucking administration it'd be like trying to pin the war in Iraq on Obama you would go you're out of your motherfucking mind and I'll go yeah I am actually they wouldn't even say his name they wouldn't they wouldn't blaspheme do you know what I mean yeah. It, right. There is this fucking like it, it, these journalists that that bang on Trump all the time. They hold on to this like some treasured little fucking thing. And I've seen them say it. Obama was a scandal free president. God, he was so good, wasn't he? Let me tell you, Obama, what a fucking great orator. What a great speaker. Uh, I believed he wanted to do right by America. I fully supported the Obama presidency. I'd have been able statesman. to. Yeah, I would have voted for Obama. Absolutely, fucking lootly. Like the guy. Smooth, smooth motherfucker. Yeah, I still great, like him, man. Yeah, great comedy roast. Suave as fuck. Yeah, absolute baller. Mate, if they, if, if they turned around tomorrow and produced a birth certificate that showed he actually was in Kenya all along, I wouldn't give a fuck. Yeah, no one be asked really. Ah, okay. <laughs> I so wouldn't look. give a fuck. Remember that dinner I speech, though? Yeah. I wouldn't give a fuck. Well, he's Straight just one. him and Michelle have just signed a contract with Netflix, I believe. This is, I don't know if yeah, the yeah. document is about them or if they're producing documentaries. The article that, I read was pretty that, confusing. Yeah, they're making be... them. Hmm. It's not about them. That's cool. But here's the thing: if you dig into every president since, oh, I don't know, America was formed, you're gonna find shit that ain't all that great. Um, you know, do we? Do, you, you you will find a reason to hate all of them. Yeah, it, it, or, or you will find a transgression against them. Um, and you know, like the idea that they hold on to that Obama had a scandal free presidency. It was scandal free because you never wrote up the scandals. He did drone a bunch of motherfuckers. Like you all know that, don't you? You all know he launched more drone strikes than any fucking president. You all know that, like, he did kill a bunch of people. You all know that, right? Like, 
You all know he promised to close Guantanamo Bay, a place that had some of the worst human rights abuses on record, and it was an American-owned facility doing it. You know he promised to do that and didn't do it. You all, you all know that, right? Like you all know, you all know he wasn't Jesus. He wasn't Jesus. It, 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 like he was a man, and he was he was a powerful man, and unfortunately. To be president, you gotta you gotta be corrupt. You gotta lie. You gotta do shit that maybe ain't popular. It's, it's how politics works. It's how power works. But they couldn't do it. They couldn't bring themselves to blaspheme, say his name. Oh God, no. Yeah, Obama locked up them kids. Obama, actually, if you look at his fucking immigration policy, even Snopes has to admit this is true. You can go and fact check it, right? Deported more people th th than any president before or even since. Sure, Trump's going to have a good go. I'm sure Trump sees that as a fucking record he wants yeah. to break. He's mental. But, he, like, he was He increased powers for ICE. Obama, the second coming. Why, why, why can we not say this? Why is it blasphemy now to say it? Now, again, I'll tell you, I'll tell you the truth. This might be behind a paywall. It's the New York Times. This, this, this all started because the, the, um, apparently Donald Trump is ripping children away from immigrants. Okay, they come over. They're illegals. They get caught. And they take away their kids and they separate the families. And it's horrifying and horrible, right? It's awful. And on a basic human level, before we even get into this, yeah, it is. All right? It's just a terrible thing. Um, you know, I'm sympathetic to the plights of people that try and enter countries illegally. I'm sure the vast majority of them never don't want to commit a crime. They just want to get to a place so they can make some money, exactly. kick it back, they have a better quality of life. American but unfortunately, dream. Yeah, exactly, live the American dream. But unfortunately, with the geopolitical climate the way it is, with so many criminal elements and terrorist elements, yeah, we we need to protect people within their borders. It's just how it is. It's just common sense. I, I, you know, I wish none of that was happening, but it is, right? But anyway, so this was the story doing the rounds. But here's the thing. The New York Times had to sort of come out and say, did the Trump administration separate immigrant children from parents and lose them? Well, no, what had happened was this 1500 number that was getting bandied around, these were, th this, this, these were like kids that were getting left at the fucking border. These were kids that were turning up with no parents, sometimes just siblings. It was just siblings that were just trying to cross, separated to increase their chances, meet up and stuff. So, um, it's right. When, when an unaccompanied minor enters the United States, it is the law in the United States that those minors must be remanded to foster parents or a shelter or somebody that is approved by the state to sponsor looking after those kids. So they're not being torn from their families. They're unaccounted for. Their parents can't be found or they're unaccompanied. So it is the law <laughs> that they have to be put somewhere for their own safety, their kids. I'm not saying the conditions might be great, but keep in mind that those pictures were from 2014. Show me one from a camp today, right? But th th it, but it's only for 20 days while they try and get everything resolved. Place them with family members. Locate their parents. You cannot hold a child indefinitely in a detention facility. That, that is against the law of the United States. That is a protection that is afforded to people entering the country, even though they're not protected by the laws of the country. And, and judges have... Even in, it's there. Uh, the Ninth Circuit ju judges have ruled children cannot be detained at all, at all. So let's say, okay, you have a f let's say you have a family that attempts to cross illegally, and they have kids. They cannot place the kids with their parents legally. They can't because th to do that is to detain the child. That is against the law. So the only option you then have is to not prosecute illegal immigrants at all. 
I don't know if that's I don't know if that's the answer, guys. So these are laws that are in place to protect kids. This idea that Donald Trump is like the fucking child snatcher out of chitty chitty bang bang lollipops, lolly, luring away immigrant fucking children from their fucking parents. It's madness. And it, it, the facts are there. Like, if, if, a, if a dumb fuck like me can fucking find them and present them, why can't these journalists do it? It's mental. It's just mental that you're lying to people and you're, you're the people that are meant to be telling the fucking truth. You're meant to be the people I can believe, not the politicians, not even my own mind. I don't know. I shouldn't know where to look. I'm a member of the public. So anyway, all of this has been happening, right? And Elon Musk, you might know him. Wild motherfucker. Yeah, makes flamethrowers. Makes flamethrowers for no reason. Wants to send um, cars to, the, to Mars and done fucking it. already done it. Been there, done that building electric cars he's a technologist um i actually like the dude yeah he's cool he seems to be fixing problems in the world seems to be very generous reaches out to like world crises and offers to fix with no profit or anything seems like a nice guy and um he, he, he spits ideas out all the time I, I said i wasn't sure about the flamethrower i don't understand why anyone would need a fucking portable flamethrower um <laughs> Good, good, good for you. Um, but it, he will occasionally identify problems within society and say, "Hey, maybe we should fix it. Maybe we should do this." So he's been talking about journalism because he's observed, like I've observed, there is a problem right now with honest reporting. Um, and here's here's the tweet where he said um, he wanted to create a website. That basically rated journalists and journalistic publications um, for honesty and truthfulness and reliability. And listen, I'll tell you my view on it. Uh, I think that I have no issue with like we live in a world where everything is rated. You, you know, it started with like fucking eBay ratings. Now I was like checking my uber rating the other day i've dropped from a perfect five i don't know which fucking driver did that i am one of the best motherfucking passengers you're gonna get urbane suave there was that one time i fell asleep in the back of an uber maybe it was that but i woke I, up I yeah i wouldn't see what that's about right? i'd be landed so i'm just tired maybe the guy wanted to conversation but it dropped from like five to four point nine i'm devastated about it yeah uh, but over thousands so it must have been like a, it must have been a flat one. Like, what I do? Anyway, um, so so you get rated for everything. Everyone gets rated for everything. Businesses get rated for shit. You know, if you're an Uber driver, you've got a rating. If if you're a business, people leave reviews. You've got a Yelp rating. You've got this. You've got that. Why would journalism be immune from that? Why 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 is it a terrible thing? We've got Metacritic for movies. Books, fucking films, TV series. Why, why, why is having one of those for journalism a fucking taboo? Right now, I'll tell you this: it'll be dog shit. Right, it, it will not fix the problem. It's not a well thought out. It's going to be publicly curated. It's just going to be us versus them again. It's going to be exactly the same as Twitter. Right. So let's even skip past the whole right v left people just trolling each other in an endless fucking cycle, which yeah, is what political like discourse modern. Like, yeah, we give CNN a one. Well, we're giving them a five. I'm with her. Blah, blah, blah. Breitbart's a Nazi website, so that gets a one. Well, Breitbart's going to tell the truth and show it to all you globalists and, and, and info wars. And, and it would, it's just going to be a shit show, right? But like, I, I think that would balance out, honestly. Uh, you know, sh of course, there'd be bots going on and all whatever. But I think that would balance out and it would just meet in the middle. And obviously, there would be people treating it seriously as well. But the reality is, first of all, um, it, it wouldn't make any difference. The journalists know they're lying. <laughs> they know they're misleading their readership. They know. They know. And I think most people, honestly, who read it, I, I, cause this is the thing no one really talks In the back of their mind, I think you know. I think you know you're, getting, I, I think, you know, you're just reading something you want to believe. I think you know that. 
I think when, when you read an article, Donald Trump is literally Hitler and this is why, and you hate Donald Trump, you flick through it and you, you probably know it's all exaggeration and hyperbole, but it makes you feel good because it validates what you believe. It's a gotcha moment. Like, hey, 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 we're all getting up yeah, with the guy I don't like. Hey, hey, hey. So I like this. For, and also, so let's just be, let's be real. The public, <laughs> I like to serve them, but those motherfuckers do make it hard sometimes. I ain't saying journalists don't have it tough. I, I, I've been there. I've been attacked for trying to tell the truth. I've been attacked for trying to serve the fucking public. Sometimes they don't want the medicine. Sometimes they don't want to know. Sometimes you get called a liar when you ain't. Sometimes you get called a hack when you ain't. Don't know if I want those people necessarily assessing how accurate and reliable I am. Don't know if when I broke the I by power story, I would have liked it if there had been a rating website <laughs> that said whether or not I was employable, that the idiots who said I made it all up were going to and spamming for six months. Don't know how that would have helped me, really, being right all along. But that being said, I also do believe that you have the right to make your views known, and and whether and if so, if a publication is habitually lying, then yeah, there should be a consequence for that. For me, I think the bigger consequence would be in having a much uh, more rigid framework for what publications can and can't say, much more robust libel and and, and slander and defam you know, defamation laws, and people are going to go. I thought you were all for free speech. Love your free speech. Don't believe in the right for a publication that reaches millions of people to fucking defame you and publish provable lies. And um, again, maybe it's because I'm from the UK where we've got much better, much more robust libel laws than in the US. But, uh, you know, and also maybe even a fund. So like, you know, you've got the money. Why not drop some of your VC startup money into creating a fund for victims of these outrageous slurs? I'll tell you what will stop these publications publishing lies. couple of hefty lawsuit payouts usually do the trick. Go ask Gawker about that. Ha-ha! <laughs> Judge is telling me not to publish this Hulk Hogan sex tape. <laughs> We're going to do it anyway. I'm going to publish it. We're going to do it. Get fucked. And that happened because of Pete Teal. Pete Teal bankrolled that case, right? Now the technologist. So maybe there's something in that. Like nobody can defend. And again, understand, I'm not saying every piece Gawker published was reprehensible and terrible. They did some good work. They exposed some people that needed to be exposed. But when you're doing things like Preacher is on fucking Grinder and you expose him to his congregation and ruin his life, again, I just don't understand where you're going with that. Hulk Hogan having sex, I don't see the issue. You know, this is what I mean. It's like they never, there is no, there's no reason to sort of rein yourself in. Gorka were just a bunch of bullies, basically. Just ruining lives for clicks and because they could. I don't mind so, you, actually, there was some good journalism I wanted to bring up through. Did you see the fucking Al Jazeera piece that has just come out about match fixing in cricket? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That is that sick, actually. mate. I was watching that. I was like, this is real hardcore journalism, mate. All under cover work with the fucking fixers and shit. That was sick. So if anyone's into that, give that a watch. That's a good piece. Yeah. Um, so anyway, yeah, the uh, so he said he wants to make a site about it, and he's going to call it Pravda, which is like sort of funny because Pravda means truth, but it was um it was a name of a if i remember rightly a russian uh, state publication that basically published propaganda and what wasn't truth at all um so i maybe maybe rework the name although i think he's already registered the website uh so anyway immediately after saying that journalists started getting on his back right and saying well no no no, no there's not hey, there's nothing wrong with journalism you don't understand journalism and he started saying well that's you know uh, the public care about this. The public have lost faith that you're not lying to them anymore. There's another tweet for you. Um, and then uh, more journalists started attacking him. And uh, he started getting a little bit more uh, combative and pointed to some reporting he felt was false and defamatory about t uh, Tesla. Then he um, did a poll. He did, a, he did a poll where he said, should I create a media credibility rating site that also flags propaganda Botnets. Now, this is overwhelmingly something that the, the public that saw his tweet 
wanted 88% out of 681,000 people who voted. It's a pretty broad cross-section. People like the idea of having uh, media accountability in an era where journalists are just running wild. Um, and he even went as far as to say you could just think of it like Yelp for journalists. So cool. Um, so what do you think the journalists did, Sam? Do you think the journalists said, hey, you know what? We are maybe a little bit out of control. We've been fucking publishing all these like sort of mad fucking demented stories all about, you know, and there just seems to be no checks and balances anymore. In fact, what constitutes journalism? How the standards have slipped a little bit. Maybe it's not a bad thing that the public who is, after all, who was supposed to serve, wouldn't maybe, maybe they should be able to hold us accountable. Well, no, they didn't do that. Instead, they then started saying, ah, it comes from a place of ignorance. Uh, they said Elon Musk had spent no time in the newsroom. Of course, Elon Musk has spent time in newsrooms. Uh, this, this is a matter of record. Uh, this was Ben Collins uh, from NBC News took particular interest in having a back and forth with Elon Musk saying, when was the last time you spent time with a reporter? You should learn more. Um, but da -da -da -da. Because uh, Elon wouldn't answer the specific date of when the last time he was in a newsroom was. Um, they tried to make out that he was being uh, disingenuous. A lot of journalists uh, just started replying to him. Now, Elon Musk then also made a fatal error. He tweeted out an article that was written by people that had ties to a sex cult. A mistake anybody can make. It's the we're told it's the era of fake news. There's there's articles that look credible flying out all over the place, and people retweet them. And this is why Facebook has been up in Congress, and Twitter are changing their rules about what you can and can't link to, and Reddit are, are having more stringent controls. They don't want the fake news to spread. And e Elon got fake news that can happen to anybody. But that was it. Now the fucking gloves were off, and the floodgates fucking were were wide open. So I'm just going to show you just the sheer volume of hit pieces. And there's a, I mean, this all leads to where I'm going to end the podcast on. That what you have to understand, like I said at the start of the show, modern journalism, it's a cabal. It's a cult. They're a group of people. They're bullies. And anybody who criticizes them, anybody who says maybe these journalists tell lies, maybe they should have some checks and balances, maybe they're unethical, maybe they're dishonest, smeared immediately on mass you will be portrayed as what is 2018's worst thing to be you will be a racist you will be an anti-semite you will be a misogynist you will get compared to donald trump who is apparently all of those things even though that makes no fucking sense right so let's see first it started gentle just a tip Elon Musk uh, wants to uh, implement a dopey uh, rating system. Here's why it won't work. Okay, calling it dopey, that's fine. I'm on board with that. You're entitled to that opinion. Uh, slight really hammered home the idea that he'd retweeted a sex cult thing. Uh, they said, Elon Musk's crusade uh, for media accountability... Um, hang on, sorry, I'm going to pop up out there because it's fucking slate. Elon Musk's crusade for media accountability lasted three whole days before he recommended a new site affiliated with a suspected sex cult. Why would the two be in any way contradictory? Sh actually, if anything, it shows, yeah, we do need more fucking accountability for media that we consume on the fucking internet. People need to know what's true and what isn't. That's what slate went with. Again, this idea of guilt by association or, haha, Elon Musk doesn't know what he's talking about. We knew it all along. Newsweek, an atrocious publication, a shadow of its former self, thankfully running on fucking fumes, that has published some of the most outrageous lies since the, uh, since the Trump administration came to pass. Elon Musk goes to war with the media. Sam, where did he go to war with the media? <laughs> I thought, it, uh, like, didn't he just say uh, uh, the media should be accountable? Where's the war? Where's the war? How are we at war? Journalists, you should be accountable. Newsflash, I know. You should be accountable for everything you do and print. Yes, you should. You're not at war. You're stating something that should already be true. 
Elon Musk goes to war with the media, promotes site with alleged sex cult ties. Didn't promote it, retweeted it, deleted the retweet as soon as somebody told him what the site was actually about and apologized for it. Promotion, mm, that's kind of saying, hey, have you seen this fucking awesome new fucking sex cult website I just found? I'm sure Team Martin will be promoting that fucking soon. Allegedly. Covered. Um, so, all right, it's... it's uh, it's going to end there, right? I mean, all of these pieces, of course, overlook the fundamental truth that it was going to be the public that would curate, not Elon Musk. He's not. He's not going to be. Uh, that's accurate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, is that another sex cult? Sorry, my bad. It wasn't. It was never going to be like that. It was always going to be the public. We're going to have their say. So they even disingenuously misrepresent what the end goal would have been. Right. Then he got into an argument, Sam. It gets worse. It's, it's mental. This is what happens. You can't call out journalists, Sam, or they come for you. Right? He got into an argument, right, with somebody. Uh, that actually, yeah, it was ben, that Ben Collins from NBC News again. And um, they were taught. Uh, uh, what Somebody replied to him and said, um, you're very smart, so I want you to think about this for a second. This was actually um, the co-founder for Vox Media said, um, you're very smart, so I want you to think about this for a second. Do you think it's in the interest of powerful people to A, support a free press that exposes their lies, or B, tear it down so their lies are easier to tell? Now ask yourself why the polls would look bad. And Elon Musk said, who do you think owns the press? Hello. Now, what he means here is powerful people actually control the press. This is a demonstrable fact. 90% of all media outlets I mean, are owned by... New? Is this new news now, that rich people control the upper echelons of society? Is this new now? Oh, no. Sam, Sam, that isn't... No, that isn't what they accuse him of. That, that Ben Collins guy from NBC News immediately replies, Uh, Elon, where are you going with this? Do you know what they rep said he, this meant? Jews control the media. Oh, That's... God. That's what the, that's what they think. Well, no, they know he's not saying that. They know Elon Musk isn't saying Jews run the media, which is, of course, in case you didn't know, a massive talking point of Nazis and the alt-right. But Ben Collins, honest, genuine, great guy, lovely, wonderful, trustworthy journalist from NBC News, has literally now tried to make it look like Elon Musk. Jews run the media. Jews run the media. <laughs> He hasn't even said it. It's not even there. He's clearly talking about powerful people. It's a direct reply to a tweet of another journalist saying that, yes, powerful people own the press. Powerful people own the press. He hasn't said Jews run the media. He hasn't said Jews run the media. Yet journalists are out there saying Elon Musk has said Jews run the fucking media. He hasn't said that. It is demonstrably true he hasn't said that within the context of the conversation. It's fucking mental, isn't it? It's mental. It is mental. Russian Times, who, by the way, had all already run sort of negative pieces uh, about Tesla. I'm not saying Russian Times has, ooh, I don't know, ties to energy companies, big oil, Russian oligarchs. Couldn't possibly be true. Couldn't possibly be true that they'd have an interest in running negative stories about electric cars. Richard, you're mental. You and your conspiracy theories. But they jumped straight onto it, right, loving it, and said... Who do you think owns the press? Elon Musk tweet attracts barrage of anti-Semitic comments. As if he's in any way responsible, by the way, for all the alt-right slime that reply to that tweet going, ha ha, he knows, he knows the Jews are in the media. He would never said that. Powerful people are in the media. They 100% do, though. Why are we fucking calling Elon Musk out? Right, but Russian Times ran the fucking story as if uh, he was responsible. I mean, keep in mind the Daily Stormer also ran the story. Elon Musk calls out Jews. I'm not going to bring up the Daily Stormer. Fuck those losers. Right? Doesn't end there. Doesn't end there that Elon Musk is a fucking anti Semite. Of course not. Now he's an anti Semite, Sam. Now he's an anti Semite. <laughs> it has to be. For insinuating um, that the people who own the media are powerful. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It, it's it's insane. It's insane. Uh, people actually requested that Elon Musk denounce the people replying to his tweet, saying, "Yes, the Jews, the Jews." <laughs> but he didn't. He didn't say that. So why should he have to denounce other people? It, it's this mad game of goodbye association. This is Vanity Fair. 
Vanity Fair did it. Ran the tweet front and centre. Who do you think owns the press? Which prompted a number of his followers. They couldn't just be people on Twitter that noticed the tweet because it was trending. They must specifically be Elon Musk's followers, right? To respond with a flood of anti-Semitic tweets about members of the media. When asked to clarify, Musk replied, pointing out to aspiring journal and rodding spokesmodel Josh Topp, who thinks public polls are controlled by powerful people that the media is owned by same. Anyone who thought this was anti-Semitic is just revealing their inner bigot. Well, yeah. All of you fucking journalists, you couldn't wait. You couldn't wait to try and label him as an anti-Semite because he said you guys lie and are dishonest and are disingenuous. Right, And then, just check this, senior reporter at The Guardian, please, Elon, if for some reason you haven't already thought of doing this, please sue this guy till he's on the fucking streets washing my car, right, please do that, fuck this cunt, I've seen him say some outrageous shit about multiple people, people, he's a fucking liar, he's not fit to wear the mantle of journalists, this is Martin Bellum, senior reporter at The Guardian, he said, Elon Musk is gonna go full on alt-right, isn't he? So, so, uh, because... Elon Musk said powerful people control the media. Demonstrably true. Six media companies in America own 90% of all media output. Demonstrably true. Demonstrably true. Um, you're going to say that Elon Musk is alt-right. And when somebody asked him to clarify why Elon Musk is going to be alt-right, he said because he has started attracting a lot of anti-Semites with his questioning of who runs the media and linking out to a site trying to give Gamergate-style objective rankings to news articles. Don't know what that's going to do with Gamergate, but we'll come to that at the end. Once you lie down with dogs, etc. So in other words, right? Because an, um, an anti-Semite has replied to an Elon Musk tweet, he, he is now lying down with those anti-Semitic dogs and has got anti-Semitic fleas. There's no way you can believe this. You are deliberately doing this out of fucking spite. You are calling him alt-right, a man who regularly goes to Israel, right? You're calling him alt-right out of spite because he has said you are liars and you are so pathetic and feeble-minded you prove him right with shit garbage like this absolute nonsense absolute nonsense but it doesn't end there here come the hit pieces here come the hit pieces, Sam. And remember, now that it's fair game, now that Elon Musk is anti-Semitic, misogynistic, well, he's just Donald Trump, and he's just Donald Trump. How can we do it? Like, I'll tell you a little thing about journalists. This was exposed during Gamergate, but I already knew it to be true. I was a games journalist. I, I, I reviewed games for a very small publication, but I did it all the way back to when NUS was a thing and when I was at university. Let me tell you. Uh, for, for as long as I have been involved in journalism, there have been cliques of journalists that even though they're at different publications, they all talk to each other, they all share each other's news and opinions, and and uh, they all have a very similar mindset. You have to be. It's a clique. Um, and, and they communicate about what stories they're writing, and then they will very often coordinate uh, a blanket offensive against something they think is important enough. Now, this for me is highly unethical. It absolutely shouldn't be uh, what, you, what you should be doing. No, you should be covering stories that are relevant. You shouldn't be communicating with other journalists prior to publishing something saying, well, what are you going to write? Are you going to say this? Because I'm going to say this. Yeah, let's do it. Let's coordinate it. Uh, they did this with my Milo, for example, whatever you think about Milo's comments, the fact that about 12 articles went out about Milo Yiannopoulos being a paedophile, uh, absolute outrageous lies, but they all went out at like one minute past 8 a.m. American time, uh, it, it tells you all you need to know. It was a coordinated effort. It was a coordinated monstering, they call it, in the business. And they talk to each other, and they talk to each other, and they're in Slack groups. It used to be, you know, the Games Journal pros. It was like a big Gmail fit hangout. Um, but now it's Slack groups and discords, and they literally crowdsource hit pieces, and they go for the same talking points. They all talk to each other. We should hit him on this. We should hit him on that. And they all write the pieces that pretty much say the same things and are a similar theme and it's all about uh, taking down a particular target this is a demo this isn't 
made up. This isn't a conspiracy theory. This has been proven in politics. Go back to 2010. It was proven in games journalism with the Games Journal Pros groups. There has been collusion of groups of journalists to write narratives up for, as, for like I say, for, for years, for as long as I've been involved in journalism. So here it begins. Elon Musk is Trump. Elon Musk is Trump. This is it, Sam. Elon Musk is Trump. Has to be. Has to has to be so let's get brett stevens uh brett stevens from the new york times let me right so is it just me or is elon musk like a really good technologist guy who's trying to make the world a better place that's what i think of when i think of elon musk he's probably arrogant you won't find many billionaires who aren't i mean yeah he's a genius eccentric billionaire that's kind of the whole point in it like isn't right everyone's like that Brett Stevens, uh, the columnist for the New York Times, says he is prone to unhinged Twitter eruptions. He can't handle criticism. He scolds the news media for its purported dishonesty and threatens to create a Soviet-like apparatus to keep tabs on it. Definitely didn't do that. I speak of Tesla CEO Elon Musk, and he wrote this piece here. Which is uh, just incredible. It's just a wow. Where they get this from? Elon Musk, the Donald of Silicon Valley, and they try and draw all these parallels between him and Donald Trump, even though actually there aren't really a lot of parallels. But I guess if you just word everything disingenuously, you can make anyone sound like Donald Trump, really, can't you? Of course you can. Of course you can. It's fine. Doesn't stop there. You have uh, the um, in these times, uh, Elon Musk. Um, <laughs> this is this is a good one. I like this one. Uh, Elon Musk is obsessed with fake news. Is, is as obsessed with fake news as Donald Trump. He definitely isn't. Donald Trump has been talking about fake news for over two years. Um, <laughs> Elon Musk. It's a relatively new thing, actually. Um, he didn't and even he even up fake news. Really, he came up with yeah, a, a review platform for journalists. Never even, never even used the phrase. Fake news just said the public have lost a bit of faith. They lost a bit of faith because of shit like this. So there you go. So he's he's as obsessed with fake news as Donald Trump. Demonstrably not true. Uh, Fastcompany.com decided to lecture, uh, to, to do this lecture. What Elon Musk and Donald Trump, there he is again, don't understand about journalism. As if, of course, their views were the same. Their understanding of the issue <laughs> or if he's was... his fucking uh, vice president. Uh, like, uh, yeah, exactly. Elon Musk and Donald, both of them. Like. Yeah, just together together at last. Now, I, I don't recall Donald Trump suggesting that there should be a review system, a rating system. I don't recall that. Um, don't recall that at all. Uh, but, but, you know, must have happened, must have happened because, you know, Elon Musk is Donald Trump now. Um, then again, the most, the most intellectually dishonest, the most, the most foul and wretched implication I saw, of course it came from the Guardian. What a toilet, what a shit house that the fucking, that publication has become. I used to love reading the Guardian. I used to love it, man. It, it used to do some bang on journalism. The shit it publishes now. Oh God. It, it makes me puke. Um, here you have it, right? This is the Guardian just did a quiz. Martin Bellum again, of course. Remember that name. Who said it? Donald Trump or Elon Musk? And again, as if implying that all the outrageous and you know horrible racist, obviously things that Donald Trump have said. Well, now how can you tell Elon Musk and Donald Trump apart? How can you? How can you? Sam, I, I, they're the same person with the same values and the same beliefs. Forget the fact that they clashed on numerous things, and Elon Musk actually moved away from being an advisor to the Trump administration following the uh, um, disengagement from the Paris Climate Accord. That's fine. That's fine. Um, what What do you think uh, the Financial Review had to say about it? Well, surely you're going to keep it about the money, not a Financial Review. You wouldn't fucking get bogged down in hyperbole. Wrong, as Donald Trump would say. Tesla's Elon Musk is the new Donald Trump. He's just the new Donald Trump. Donald oh, Trump, a man, right, a, a man who ran a, a bogus university that went bankrupt. Uh, 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 Donald Trump, a man who thought selling steaks in, su- in stores would be a good idea. Couldn't do that. Uh, uh, he, somehow, there are a guy who's trying to fix the world's fuel problems uh, is, is now actually the next Donald Trump. Donald Trump never did anything vaguely altruistic in all of his life. Um, so let's, let's not pretend that, shall we? The Verge... 
The Verge jumped in. They wanted to go down the more it's Gamergate article. Uh, Elon Musk thinks you can crowdsource truth, but that's not how the internet works. We know how the internet works over at The Verge. We know how the internet works. And they basically write up a load of uh, gibberish. Uh, basically saying that it's like Gamergate and Gamergate is harassment um, and, and that's what this will lead to. And Elon Musk is encouraging that kind of culture, which, of course, was all a lie to fucking begin with. So, uh, right. Well, uh, it ends there. Whew. Fucking hell, Sam. We can close out the show. No, we can't. Because now we've got to talk about Aaron Bieber. Aaron fucking Bieber. Who's oh, Aaron fuck. Bieber? Who's Aaron Bieber? Yeah. Well, hmm. This is how I came to get retweeted by Elon Musk. Aaron Bieber is a freelance science journalist. And I am going to say this. I spent today looking through all of her work and going through all of her archive uh, cash tweets on Google. She seems to do very good work, honestly. Um, but is clearly a misandrist um, who really does have issues with men. I mean, there's some really embarrassing tweets on there that aren't relevant to this discussion, but just things like if I ever get married, I'm going to force, uh, no, what was it? If I, I hate going to weddings and I don't want to get married, but I'm thinking about getting married uh, as a revenge to force my, my friends to sit through my wedding the same way I had to sit through their weddings. It's like just mean, bitter loneliness. Like it's sad, tragic. You know, she just comes across as like a really insecure person Think like she, she did a tweet. Men are terrifying. She responded to a guy in another tweet who, when she was talking about the Me Too movement, some guy just said, "You do know it's not all men. Like not all men are rapists or sexual sex offenders." And she said, "Oh, you're one of those dickheads that think that not all men are rapists, are you? Goodbye!" And immediately blocked them. I mean, you know, she's not a rational person. And, and it's a shame because actually her, her, that that does not inform her journalistic work for the most part. It's kind of the quirky science stories, you know, like um, here's a really interesting piece of science, scientific research that's going on. Most of her work is really good, actually. Really good. Anyway, she um, she basically said that uh, Elon Musk was had made a history of attacking science. And now he was attacking journalism. Now, my understanding of Elon Musk is he definitely does not attack science. In I mean, fact, he attacks I've... it in a, in a challenge it kind of way. He goes at science. He doesn't um, challenge it to be true. Yeah, she, she said he is attack, has attacked science and is now attacking journalism. And it makes no sense to me. Now, one of the foremost thinkers in any field of science that we have right now, a man whose name has been synonymous with some unbelievable uh, achievements, uh, especially in regards to space travel and rocketry. Uh, it, it, it's mind-blowing that you would say he's somehow anti-science. I, I, maybe I missed something. I don't know what that would something would be. I looked for it all day before coming to do this show. Couldn't find it. Couldn't find it. So, all right. So, it's fine. Um, but what, what happened was Elon replied to her. Now, I think this is fair game. I think if you're a journalist in particular, but I think if anybody talked... Right, Twitter... I think of Twitter like this. Twitter is a bar. Okay? A pub. If you were in a bar, and and, and everyone in the world is in this bar, Okay, and if I go, if I start shouting, Elon Musk is a cunt, Elon Musk is a cunt, All right at the top of my voice, and Elon Musk is having a drink over there, and he goes, are you calling me a cunt, mate? I wouldn't go, oh, mate, you're out of order responding to me. You fucking sit down, Elon, you fucking cunt. I told you once. You know, you, you wouldn't do it. You would be, you, you would... You would not act like that in a public place. And if you did act like that in a, in a public place and the person you were saying that shit about sidled up to you and said, what the fuck are you doing? You wouldn't be like, well, what's wrong with you? You're outrageous. You brought that upon yourself by invoking their name. Now, Twitter is a public place. It is a public platform. And if you say something that is actually demonstrably false about someone on said public platform, they are well within their rights to reply to you. Well within their rights. And actually, how nice it is 
that he took the time to tweet at her and say, I have never, the reply he said, I'll read it to you, he said, uh, I have never attacked science, but I have attacked dishonest journalism like yours. Um, I, 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 how nice it is for him to do that and not just, he's a billionaire. He could just be litigious. If that was Trump, you know, there's probably, my, Michael Cohen picks up the phone. You know, he, he, he just said, I've never attacked science. That's unfair. But I'm not going to take any further action against your defamatory comments, which I could do because I've got more money than God. Um, and, and instead, I'm going to challenge your views. and Maybe we have a conversation. I actually like that. I think that makes sense. What Aaron Bieber then decided to do was because, you see, and, and you'll notice a lot of losers do this and journalists do this all the time. Um, they, they say that, you, right, Keep in mind, Erin Bieber has a following of thousands. But for some reason, all her followers are not influenced by her. But Elon Musk has a following of 22 million on Twitter. And therefore, his following is bigger than hers. His followers will react to everything he says. By replying to her, he has initiated harassment. She actually said this. Imagine being a journalist on Twitter, right? A platform designed for conversation, a platform that you have to be on, that is absolutely essential for your job uh, to, 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 to um, you know, do your work. Um, look at this. People who tweet harassment get reported and shut down, but I'd also argue that literally hundreds of tweets into my mentions is a form of harassment. So being noticed and replied to on Twitter is a form of harassment. After you got involved and made your opinion known. Yeah, yeah, it's a form of harassment, Sam. Mm. It is a form of harassment to be replied to on Twitter. But she didn't leave it there, right? She got so upset at people saying, how dare you say Elon Musk is anti-science? Fuck you. You, you know, and it ranges from the reasonable like that. Right to the fuck you, you stupid cunt. Women shouldn't write whatever. I mean, fuck these losers over here. But you can't pretend all of the criticism was that when that was actually a very small percent of it. Like you, you said a stupid thing, and journalists do this all the time. They say something stupid about someone, and when that person challenges the stupid thing they've said and disproves it, they call the resulting sort of you know furor around it. They call that harassment, and it isn't. That's how conversations work. You said the dumb thing, the person responded, That's that, and now you must be called dumb. <laughs> that is how it works. Um, but she didn't want to leave it there. She was so bitter, so bitter. Elon Musk has made people message me. <laughs> she immediately, like within an hour, less than of this happening, she wanted to spin this narrative that she'd been harassed. So she tweeted out, female journalists, only female journalists, ha Im Im again, implying that um, Elon Musk fans um, hate women, and maybe Elon himself does. Female journalists, have you been harassed by Elon Musk fans? Please DM me your most horrific, only your most horrific tweets and messages, and please share this. Within about 15, 20 minutes of her posting this, she made her account protected. So I don't know how you expect people to share it. I think we can safely say Aaron Bieber, probably a bit of a moron as well, because um, uh, you can't share things when your account's protected. Uh, so, okay. So I was like, right. So now she is basically advertising, I'm going to write a hit piece. And I'm going to equate the behavior of what I am like saying at Elon Musk's fans to Elon Musk himself. And she went away. And she wrote a hit piece. It's the worst piece of work she's ever done in her career. And I said, I told you, I went through it all. It's she's a pretty good science journalist. Um, makes it accessible, right? But the newly appointed editor over at the Daily Beast, uh, Noah Schachtman, said, "Erin Bieber has done something incredibly brave." She's documented what happens when female journalists dare to question Elon Musk. And she wrote this article, what it's like when Elon Musk's Twitter mob comes after you. Again, the implication of ownership. What did Elon Musk do? He replied to somebody lying about him, being defamatory about him on the internet. He is not responsible for anything that comes after it. And people need to stop creating this incredibly weird ruling system because it's impractical. 
you have to say he's not responsible because then if we get into the realm of oh well you're responsible for everything your followers do well uh, what where's the cutoff point everyone goes ah oh, people with massive following shouldn't reply it encourages harassment well what's a massive following 10 20 100 thousand what is it where's the cutoff point what if i've only got 50 followers but they're all fucking mad jihadis who want to kill you like i've only got 50 followers but they will fuck up your life can i tweet now no what like it where the madness it's 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 completely unenforceable you just have to say guess what not responsible elon musk never called out for harassment there's no evidence of that whatsoever he didn't say anything that would even be remotely inflammatory he just said her journalism was dishonest so anyway should we have a look at this piece of shit article sam let's have a look um what it's like when elon musk's twitter mob comes after you by aaron bieber uh, female journalists who cover Elon Musk have the same personal rule. Mention his name on Twitter at your peril. I'm sure that's not a rule. I'm sure that's never been discussed. I'm sure until this happened, no one had ever said that ever. If the, you, you only brought it up today. Um, so she talks about how she went on Twitter and said the thing that she said. Shows you the reply here. I have never attacked science. Definitely attacked misleading journalism like yours, though. And this is after she said, a billionaire with massive power, Elon Musk lashed out at two of the most under-attacked industries in the country, journalism and science. Both are essential for democracy, implying Elon Musk is eroding democracy now. We should criticize our important institutions, but we shouldn't threaten their existence with powerful ignorance. Now, in this article, she actually admits um, that she, she lied. And tries to just muddle through it. Now, we can argue semantics here, she says. Did he actually attack science? <laughs> oh, you're the person saying he did. You're the person who publicly said he did. I fucking hope he did. Otherwise, you, you just lied. Is a tweet actually journalism? Has he even read any of the articles I've written? Honestly, none of that matters. So. What matters... Obviously, yeah. Whether or not I lied doesn't matter. But what matters is the aftermath of those lies, right? Um, so now she shows um, some of the abuse she got. Now, again, I don't, sub I, I don't think this abuse is okay. I don't think it's cool. I don't think it's reasonable. Um, Libtard Triggeration tweeted at her, You got fucking smoked, Erin Bieber. Go shove your fake news up your grimy cunt. You can't block or ban me free speech. Um, it's not a very nice tweet but again it's one tweet it's not harassment I think you would just get over that um, then she goes I also enjoy so keep in mind these are the tweets she's highlighting to make it look like she had the worst time ever and keep in mind she also had reached out to other journalists female journalists to get their worst experiences and this is the best they can do uh, she had an email here. If only you weren't such an unfuckable cunt. One day soon, we'll hopefully have a real journalist, hopefully doing the job you are not doing. Please go away. You'll notice that the title of the email is far worse than the contents of the email. You're going to see in a few moments why I think that probably isn't the title of the email. I, I think that's been made up. But okay, but let's, let's pretend it's real. Um, Musk. That's what it says. You're an idiot. Oh, God. I can feel it from here, Sam. Someone emailed her a publicly available email um, that she promotes to get tips for her stories. And someone said, you're an idiot. How the yeah, no, how would, how would you ever get over it? How would you ever get over it, Sam? How would you ever get over it? And then even Instagram um, got in on the fun. And you'll see here. Um, Aaron is a leftist demic rat shill. They're so clever on the... <laughs> the left cat meme. <laughs> right? And Elon just straightened her hair. Well, I think it's a her. Um, that's debatable. He, she is definitely ugly like the other libturd females, though. Um, and then somebody just says journalism is dead for the most part. Pretty much all the things I'm saying on this podcast, po podcast, I don't know why I said that podcast. Um, you know, so ignore that. Um, journalists try being journalists. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, it's not nice that she's being called ugly. Don't really support that. Um, 
it happens to women. It sucks. Uh, you know, it, it is what it is. Um, but, um, like, you'll notice that someone said straighten her hair. Right now, she's got curly hair, and obviously, if somebody gives you the hair dryer, like blasts at you, or gives you a shock, uh, like a shock of electricity, it would straighten your hair, right? Like make it stand on end, right? Yeah. Well, what do you think she tries to spin that as? Oh, I did read it. Anti Semitism, of course. Oh, yeah, yeah. Because we all know Elon Musk is anti Semitic, right? I mean, shit, he said powerful people control the media. Jews control the media. That's what he meant. So he's obviously an anti-Semite now as well. And she goes, pretty sure that straightened her hair comment is meant to point out that I'm a Jew. I don't even... I mean, what? Where would you get that from? How would how would these random commentators even know you were Jewish? What is that? Madness! Um, then, they, 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 so these are the tweets um, that, she, that she was able to collate. Oh, before we even get there. She interviewed Brianna Wu, which this article has a huge credibility problem um, because, right. So first of all, it's a matter of public record. If you, if you don't follow Brad Glasgow on Twitter, you should. Brad Glasgow is one of the good journalists. He is one of the few journalists that gave a very impartial and fair hearing to Gamergate and the ups and downs and all of that stuff. I like Brad. He is a good man and a good journalist, a fine reporter. Um, there was an incident uh, where a guy called Nolan Bush Bushnell was about to be given a, um, uh, uh, a video game industry award. Uh, it was a pioneer award. Uh, because he was one, he was like the uh, co-founder of Atari, and Brianna Wu took to Twitter and basically started saying that um, here's some facts about Nolan Bushnell, and he is responsible for all these um, uh, sec sexual harassment acts at Atari, and they withdrew the award. Slight problem, it was all lies. And um, Brad Glasgow is, I'm look, I definitely haven't got time to read you the whole thing, but he went through and he interviewed people and he proved that these were all, that, that her, Brianna Wu's tweets were bullshit. I mean, forget the fact that on top of that, she also faked her own harassment. Uh, one of the one of the reasons why she's supposedly credible in this article is that she was harassed all throughout d during Gamergate. Well, here's a screenshot of the time that she went on her own Steam page, forgot to log out of her main account into whatever sock puppet account she was using, and created a thread. Is GSX head of development a noted feminist? Brianna, we're a terrible person. H and Gamergate and Kotaku in action. Knock yourselves out. And somebody got a screenshot of it in time before she had time to delete it. So th these are things you would know if you were a journalist that did research. And I would say you have a credibility problem here um, if, if you're talking to Brianna Wu. I mean, forget the fact as well that you're a science journalist and you're interviewing somebody who said that they're going to take over the moon and throw rocks at us to kill us all <laughs> and you're a science journalist and you're interviewing this fucking lunatic what are you doing what are you doing this would be like the last science journalist this is the kiss of death she said they can drop rocks from the moon they said they said rocks from the moon and you drop a rock off the moon and it would kill us all <laughs> Saying. What is she saying? She also tweeted just the other day. I'm trying to find it. Um, she also tweeted, would any of you be... This is Brianna Wu. Would any of you be surprised if Donald Trump uh, made X-Men style sentinels that target people, targeted people of color? I wouldn't. That's the timeline we live in. What? Like, what? I, I, I'm going to go on record here, Sam. I'm going to be bold. I do not think Donald Trump is going to commission a Sentinel program to, to talk <laughs> black people in America. I, I, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, it's I'm a risking. bold one, mate. Yeah, it's a bold one. Uh, I, I, I'm trying to find the tweet. Let me. Oh, fuck it. No one, no one's going to believe that she would tweet that. But. 
she did. So let me just find it. Hang on. Um, right, hold on. Fact, actually. Here we go. <laughs> it's wild. She deleted the tweet, of course. Uh, why wouldn't you? Uh, where was it? Fuck, come on. Maybe I need Google Sentinel. Oh, fuck it. Oh, Actually, right. have you got it? Might do. Okay. You, you try it. Got... Yeah, you, you find it and bring it up. Well, whatever. It definitely happened. I'm not making it up. Um, I found that. But, it, but in the interest of... Uh... No, it's not that because it, she deleted it. But she was talking about X Men a lot for some reason. Like uh, the bulk of her campaign is about X Men. I, I don't know why. Anyway, so you've definitely got a massive credibility problem if you're interviewing Brianna Wu. But then uh, she she got all these other journalists. So I'm like, okay, well let's have a look at the um, the worst. She, keep in mind, she said, send me your most horrific, your most horrific encounters after reporting uh, from e Elon Musk. And again, you can just scroll down here. Um, says here, Sharon Weinberger uh, from Foreign Policy got a DM that said, you dumb bitch, Elon Musk just shit on you. Uh, okay, I mean, it's it's not pleasant, but it's bad. Um, uh, but it's not the worst thing that's ever happened. It, I wouldn't call it horrific. Uh, someone else DM'd, uh, you're so gross, straight loser. Uh, someone else DM'd, don't fuck with Elon. Um then Jessica Huseman, I think, uh, who works at ProPublica. I think that's the fucking deranged blog that fucking Louise Mensch funded. Um, got a tweet saying, um, bitch, he is a revolutionary a disruptor. I mean, the word bitch isn't the worst thing, is it? Can we all cope with bitch? Um, there was another one here uh, for against Jessica. You're so ugly, lady. <laughs> it's just childish. And she even replied to that one. Thank you for this thoughtful criticism. I will certainly take it under advisement. Uh, another one. How about you shut the hell up and stop bothering Elon? Every minute you cause trouble is a minute that fully autonomous vehicle is late to market. You're literally killing people. I think that's a parody. Yeah, I think that's a joke, yeah. Yeah, but, but of course, you know. So anyway, these are the worst. These are the worst that she could come up with. And she also says, by the fucking way, um, in, in the article... Uh, let, let me let me just show you this. Uh, she also says um, that she got death and rape threats. Okay, but she didn't include any of them in the story. Why wouldn't you? Hmm. It would it, it would strengthen your argument. Uh, it, I mean, it it, it absolutely would. Um, so you can read it here. Um, it's just above the tweet by Matt IRL. Um, it says, here is just a tiny fraction of the messages I've received once people heard I was writing this story. I've left out the hate speech and death threats. Well, I would certainly hope uh, that you wouldn't leave that out because, first of all, that would be something that would prove your point. So you would be a disservice to your own article. And, and second of all, um, I would hope that the editor saw these death threats. I, I, because I, it, it's such a disingenuous thing. It's published a lot. I did get death threats. C can you show me the death threats? Nah, it, so I was already – that's why I think that email that I mentioned earlier with the, with, with the title, that just doesn't line up with the tone of the email at all. If only you weren't such an unfuckable cunt and then you go into the, art, you go into the body of the email expecting like some misogyny and it just says one day we'll hopefully get a real journalist doing the job you are not doing. What's that got to do with her being an unfuckable cunt? There's, there's a disconnect there. It doesn't have that ring of truth to it to me. And then you're going to be, oh, Richard, you can't just say she's dishonest. You can't just say she's lying and making it up. That's a bit irresponsible. You're talking about responsible journalism. That's irresponsible. Well, here's the thing. I actually spent the whole fucking d day digging into her cash tweet because she deleted before publishing this story she deleted all of her tweets right why would you do that why would you right there's an issue of journalistic accountability here she's saying she got all this abuse and she deleted all of the fucking uh, tweets so now we can't see whether or not they 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 existed 
Um, yeah, that isn't it. That isn't real. Somebody's doctored that. It's funny, though. The Yoda with the flashlight's always funny. Uh, but, but, you know, so uh, it would be nice to leave them there as an accountability issue, right? Don't delete them all. But fortunately, they were all Google cached. So I went through and I looked at some keywords like Musk and Elon and Tesla and SpaceX. And I wanted to go through them all just to see why it was she was so fucking vitriolic towards Elon Musk and why she wanted to write this hit piece. And you'll never guess what I found. Turns out she's only got a history of being verbally abusive to Elon Musk on Twitter. Can you believe it? So back, I back on the 23rd, uh, Elon Musk was talking about trying to donate uh, to somebody and saying that they don't accept PayPal. Let me know when you do. And she, he just replied randomly out of the blue with, you're pretty much the worst. All right. Bit strong, isn't it? Then she had tweeted at him again and been abusive. You can see here, this was back in February. You sent something into space. This is the car when, when he launched the car up there. You sent a thing to space. It cost a bazillion dollars. You sent an advertisement. You are gross. Why not throw some science instruments up there? Why not put kids' science experiments on it? Why not use this moment to do some good or further education or anything else? Not an ad. Not an ad. Because he's Mi the one who came up out to get a fucking Mars era, and that's why he made. He made the car. He made the rockets. He made the fucking blueprints. He got the money. He does what the fuck he wants. If he wants to flow an hot dog into space, he'll do it because it's his cash. Why are you asked? Get your own rocket. <laughs> Go buy your own ICBM from fucking Russia if you that asked. Fuck me. What is everyone's addiction to everyone else's life? Live your movie. Stop looking outside. <laughs> Fuck me. But, but, but here's the thing. She was so... She misses the point of what it was. It's not that he wanted to send a car up there. Like it was obviously it was an experiment. It was part of a bigger thing. It's a big payload. That's your point. People are like you can't get a car to space. Surely how is he going to get a car to Mars? Yeah. That's your point. So, so she then dismissed the the whole project publicly again with disparaging remarks about Elon Musk. This is what got retweeted because she made a joke about his dick, and it goes, "It was just a manifestation of Musk's ego in the form of a space car. It was such a boring choice. If he couldn't be out there, he picked the thing closest to himself." Someone replied, "Yes, yes, yes. I wasn't brave enough to say it first, but it's so totally and transparently a guy ego thing, boring and ordinary and predictable, which is not his brand. That's why it feels so wrong-footed. Ugh, so disappointing. <sighs> Look, what I really want to say is Elon just sent his giant dick into space and swung it around, but that might be going too far. Well, I guess we should all just not bother with space exploration because it's too fucking phallic." <laughs> Guess we'll just write that one off, shall we, yeah? Fuck it, I'll go back to playing Stellaris, shall I? <laughs> Missing the point, the whole reason he sent the car is because it's weird to send a car. That is why. Right? Um, so, so this is a journalist that has a history of being verbally abusive to, uh, towards Elon Musk, being allowed to write an article about Elon Musk that she crowdsourced. Uh, now, again, I've been an editor. I will just say this and not belabor the point. Um, if a journalist had a history of being abusive to a public figure and then they came to me and said hey i want to write an article criticizing this public figure because this 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 and this happened i would probably say no nah, like we'll have to get another writer to look into this because they put it under opinion you'll notice but it's not an opinion it's not an opinion piece. The reason they put it under the opinion section is because un under free speech laws in America, you have much broader protection if it's an opinion. They, but but it's it's worded and laid out like reportage. It's reporting. So uh, she it even says in the title, "This it, this is what happens." Um, oh, what it's like. They've changed it actually. Uh, what it's like when Elon Musk's Twitter mob comes after you, but. Um, you know, it's worded as if uh, this is this is all the facts. So it's like it's like reporting about a factual event. It's but they put it under opinion. I believe, like I say, to protect themselves legally, because obviously you're talking about a billionaire. You know, um, but it doesn't end there. 
So the whole piece, right, is moaning and crying about how wrong it is that people are trying to harass her on Twitter by replying to her. She, you saw it yourself. She said hundreds of people replying to me is harassment. Yes, that's what she said when talking about Elon Musk. That's the whole premise of the hit piece. What if I told you Richard dug up two weeks ago, just two weeks, just two, literally two weeks ago, her saying that actually being replied to en masse is not harassment, and that's what Twitter is for. Would contradict her entire argument, right? Would 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 render the entire point of the hit piece you're bereft. Well, she did that, mate. Here it is. Two two weeks ago. Uh, Frank Luntz said an easy way to avoid Twitter harassment is never read your app mentions and set notifications to only people whom you follow. I suggest if you're that weak-willed and pathetic, maybe social media isn't a platform for you. And if it's required for your job and you can't suck up a little bit of abuse to get those sweet, sweet hits that your publication needs, maybe you shouldn't have a job. Um, but anyway... She replied to that by saying, what the fuck is the point of Twitter then? I don't want to have to eliminate all conversations to my bubble, said the journalist who retreated into protected status merely 45 minutes after being replied to by Elon Musk. And I'd also like to know when someone is telling me they think I should die in a gas chamber so I can report them. So she has said there that not only... Uh, should she not only will she not run away into her own bubble she wants to see the abuse so she can report them and therefore categorically this isn't harassment someone replies with uh, frankie luntz again i've received more than my fair share of twitter harassment and gas chamber comments it became a lot easier to sort to sort substantive comments from trolls when i stopped paying attention to every single reply to my tweet she says agree to disagree i like to know what people are saying to and about me so it wasn't harassment then, was it? None of it was harassment by your own fucking definition. How fucking deranged do you have to be to say that just two weeks after you write a hit piece talking about how it's harassment if you get replied to? I mean, right, that is contradictory, right? Yeah. I mean, that that is patently contradictory, right? I'm not deluded. No. All right, good. Because I told you I've been drinking a lot. <laughs> Come on, Bo Ben. So, so she says that the the uh, the piece uh, it, 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 it's without substance because actually she herself agrees that it isn't harassment. The entire premise of the article slashed by her own words. And then, just as an extra little tidbit that I fucking found while I was digging through uh, all of her shit, check this for a fucking thing. She went on some big rant about how like uh, men always think they're experts on everything and when you're a journalist and you ask for a quote a man who isn't an expert will just tell you his opinion and present it as if he's an expert and women who are experts are usually not confident enough to say that they're experts and will usually deflect to somebody else now that might be true of her experiences i think they're grotesque uh, stereotypes honestly um certainly not true of my experience as a journalist um, i've certainly met some blowhard men who never shut the fuck up but i've met some women like that too um, and I've met some guys who were, you know, kind of not confident, and needed some coaxing um, to kind of like uh, open up. And I've met some women who are like that. It's just how it is. You people, there's no one set of criteria for personality for men or women. But within this tweet, there was something that really concerned me. And I think it tells you everything you need to know about the state of modern journalism. And no one picked this up. No one considers this a training issue. No, no one was like yikes holy shit like no this isn't this is this isn't this is unethical she said here i always try to contact women and people of color first before i talk to men uh because obviously if you're a person of color to her you're not a male you're not really a man you're just a person of color i mean i love that that's that's the madness of identity politics um and and second, if a woman this is the this is the part I have a problem with. And second, if a woman says she's not an expert, I push back. I'd really love to quote a woman. They need more public representation in this field. Often women are experts and just don't think they are. Let me tell you a little thing about sourcing as a journalist. If you um if you vet a source and you have like a, an ex right 
you go online or whatever, or you you go through your roller decks and you find somebody who based on their qualifications, job title, you know, whatever it might be, you believe them to be an expert, okay? And you contact them for a quote, and they go, actually, it's not my field of expertise. I'm not really an expert on this. If you then go, oh, go on, give me the quote anyway. I'd really like to quote you. Well, now what I've just done is publish a quote from a completely non, but from a source that has discounted itself as credible. It might be wrong. It might be a lack of confidence. It's not your place to fucking second guess that shit. You know? Where do you draw the line with this? This is where it gets worrying. You know, like, um, I couldn't. I, there was only male doctors at the hospital, so I reached out to a nurse, and the nurse said, well, I'm not a doctor, but I said, oh, I'd really like to quote a woman. Are we saying that's okay? Yeesh. That is that is a fucking training issue. If you are saying I am willing to put words in the mouths of my sources and encourage them to give me quotes that they don't feel comfortable giving me based on a lack of expertise, that is a fucking big, big problem. That is a big problem. But there you go. That is Erin Bieber. She came, she saw, she conquered. Um, I, I think um, I think obviously a lot of people can see now that you know she's a fucking laughing stock. My fucking tweet went viral for some reason, just highlighting all the things he's highlighted in the podcast, which is nice. Um, and yeah, like seriously, the fucking state of journalism. And this is where I'm going to end the show, Sam, because I know it's getting late. For you, <laughs> um, like I said, Modern journalism, it's a cartel. Criticize one, you, you criticize them all. They publicly come out and they say, oh, look at all the abuse we get when they don't get anything worse than the average fucking customer service rep or retail worker, you, you know. It, it's pathetic how they hold themselves up as fucking heroes when they're not. And they bring most of the abuse they get on themselves by being dishonest, having an agenda, and not taking the fucking oath and ethics that you should hold so dear to your fucking soul if you're a journalist. Seriously. Now, this is what I wanted to say. You've seen what they did with Elon Musk. Let's, let's, let's follow the pattern here. Elon Musk came out and said, man, these journalists are unethical. They... First of all, called him stupid, said his ideas to fix the problem were stupid. Then they called him an anti-Semite. Then they called him a misogynist. Then they implied guilt by association, that he was a racist, that he was about Trump, that he must be right wing. And it hasn't ended, and it's not going to end. Elon Musk's going to get absolutely fucking railed for weeks, months, maybe years to come now because he's made the grave error of offending the journalists by saying, hey, maybe you guys are unethical slobs. Now, what does this sound like? And I want people to think about this. If you were ever on the fence about Gamergate, let what is happening with Elon Musk be the example that proves to you what people like me were saying. I watched Gamergate break from the second that blo first blog post went up. I was doing an episode of Unfiltered with Destiny. Maybe even Total Biscuit was on it. Um... It broke while we were live on air. And we all arrived at the same conclusion. And that was that, yeah, games journalism does have a fucking ethical problem. It's got some shit going on. There's lots of collusion and quid pro quo and undisclosed relationships among the cliques. And that needs to be sorted out. But anybody who gives a fuck about who Zoe Quinn has sex with is, is a degenerate loser. And anyone harassing her on that basis is worse. And that, that we came to that conclusion live on air. It was there. And that's the conclusion that pretty much everyone I spoke to came to. I'm not saying that Zoe Quinn wasn't harassed. I'm saying she grotesquely over-exaggerated that harassment to make money and, and gain status. Like they all did. When they realized it was a license to print money, you'll notice the harassment levels went through the roof. Wherever the har where's, where's all the harassment now? They only bring Gamergate up when it's convenient. Here's the reality. A group of people said that they'd had enough. That there was ethical issues within this subsect, this group, this subculture of journalists. 
and they were smeared as misogynists, racists, harassers. They wrote stuff that's patently false. They like, oh, any that that it was an organized movement, something the FBI themselves couldn't find. Any old piece of shit on the internet can use a hashtag. And I'm hoping the penny's going to start to drop now. If you go against the journalists, they will all come for you. It's all they have. They know eventually their time's going to be up. The publication's going to fail. YouTubers are overtaking them. Digital media's going to come to the fucking forefront in new and exciting ways. And the rise of the citizen journalist is going to slowly but surely make the older journalists, that elite liberal fucking blogosphere that got folded into mainstream reporting somehow, it's going to render them obsolete. And they attack anybody vitriolically, dishonestly, anybody who says that maybe these people are liars with an agenda. And I saw it happen with Gamergate, and I am one of the few people who has always publicly been of the fucking view that all the reports about the harassment and the bullshit, it's mostly lies. Mostly lies. And I've asked people to show me that it was a fucking movement with a leader and organized harassment. And no one can ever do it. No one's ever been able to do it in four years, four fucking years to gather this evidence. And all you can ever do is show me some prick with a Twitter account and that's it. So I hope people start to open their eyes and realize now that as a matter of course, just in your day to day life, the media are going to lie to you. They're going to tell you what they want you to think. And it is essential that you do not get entrenched into your you know, little bubbles, your little comfortable ways of thinking, the things that give you the sweet siren song of the things you already think you know. You must apply a critical eye to everything. If you're critical of Fox News, but you believe CNN, you're just as much a fool as if it was vice versa. You've got to question everything, fact check everything. Don't even believe the fact checkers. They're infiltrated too. You have absolutely got to go out there and see for yourself. And if you start doing that, we don't even need Elon Musk either. Big responsibility for you, the reader, you, the audience. Keep that in mind as you go about your life and challenge lies wherever you see them. Anyway, time to wrap up the show. We got through it, Sam. We got through it. We did it. That was a good show, mate. Three hour one. There you go. That's yeah. Right. We were away for a little bit. Give you a little extra boys. Nice guys. Yeah. That's how we are. Um, uh, so yeah, so I'm now going to uh, wrap up the show. I might be back streaming a little bit later. I've got to fix my sleep pattern now that I'm sober uh, and fresh. Uh, so who knows? Might be streaming some games. We'll see. Obviously, all proceeds uh, of the stream, as I said, going to go to uh, the TB fund. Um, but yeah, thanks to everybody for tuning in. Hope you enjoyed this episode of the Richard Lewis Show. Uh, you guys take care of yourselves, uh, and I'll see you next time. Much love. <laughs>